Can you guys give me an audio check? Just tweet to me as a reply to this. You can hear me. The volume's okay if everything's good enough. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. So I posted, I wanted to see what kind of response I would get on a Saturday night. <laughs> I said, uh, if you made money with what I've taught, send me an email if you want to do an interview with me. Man, <laughs> my my inbox is blitzed. It's, it's We're going to have interviews for a while, apparently, because it's a lot of people that want to talk in the uh, I'm so very thankful and appreciative of that. And on a Saturday night, no less. So that kind of tells you what's up, right? You would think they'd be all out there having their good time on their weekend, not waiting to be able to jump on Twitter to say, I'm ready to talk. So anyway, uh, I didn't plan, obviously, to do a shotgun Saturday. And I guess this is a shotgun Saturday. It's just a PM edition of it, huh? So, you know, while many times these things are therapeutic, and yes, I'm going to talk about trading and how you can improve on it, but let me get the monologue out of the way, please. Many times I use this medium here to act as therapy. <laughs> I'm trying to condition myself through doing this, and I don't do very well. Most times in, in the last two Twitter spaces, I, I, I did not do well at all. And that tendency for me to swing and have mood changes and lose control of what I want to really say. I, I don't want to say those types of things. I don't want to do that. And I know some of you, maybe a lot of you, like that part of me. I don't like that part of me. And I wish I could change it. but. It just goes to show all of us have something that we're wrestling with. And I'm just thankful that when I'm able to look at the charts live, and this is what I meant earlier, because I think a few of you got it misunderstood when I said, um, when I'm looking at nothing, like right now, I'm, I don't have live candlesticks painting. My mind's not preoccupied with trying to decipher what it's going to do next. So because you know, I have a, a an open field in front of me and I can run wild and nothing really holding my attention. That means I'm letting whatever thought in the first in the line and whoever gets shoved out of the way and the next one jumps in there. That's kind of like what comes out of my mouth. And sometimes if it's a positive thing, you know, most of you can find some benefit from that. Unfortunately, the things I try to wrestle with all the time the uh, near psychotic <laughs> episodes sometimes that bipolarism brings on, uh, that doesn't always come across as uh, the best delivery after the fact. And I don't listen to the you know, the live you know, Twitter spaces because I know if I hear myself say certain things or react a specific way, uh, I'm, I'm going to be shamed because of it. I don't want to feel that. So what I did in the past and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to condition myself and fall down in front of you and hopefully do less of it. Because if I can do this the correct way, if, if I'm successful, and I might not be, but I'm trying very, very hard to do this. But it's difficult for me to maintain because I can't hold that that state of balance. Sometimes I get wound up and rage kicks in. Sometimes, you know, I get a little carried away and excited and have too much fun. And, and maybe the fun is what you like. And it feels good admittedly while I'm doing it, but then I feel convicted later on. And 
I wish I had the ability to talk eloquently all the time, but I can't. So you have to kind of let me be human, I guess, sometimes. And it's not an excuse because I'm not looking for an excuse. I'm not looking for anybody to give me permission to act out. But all of us have these things inside of us, not maybe to the extreme that I have. I'm, I'm looking at a list on my my pad here to try to keep me focused on what I want to talk about and not derail. But when you're trading and you have all of these concerns about making money or fear of making a losing trade or failure or living up to your expectations or what you think your expectations that are held by your family and friends that know about what you're doing and trading and why you're doing it. It's really difficult for some. And I once I got over the, the fear of getting in, you know, I was afraid of the entry technique. I was afraid of doing the wrong entry. You know, what's the wrong entry? You know, there isn't any wrong entry. It's just you have to engage. And sometimes you're gonna have a trade that's beneficial, sometimes you're gonna have a trade that's gonna take from you. And you have to be indifferent to the outcome. And I had to de desensitize myself, which is kind of like what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to get to the point where I can do these types of things. And hopefully it will carry over in my personal life away from all of you. Because I wrestle with this every day. And it's hard. So when I'm live and looking at candlesticks, I'm preoccupied. I won't let anything else in. My focus is what the next candle is going to be doing. So that's the reason why you can hear me talking kind of much like what I'm talking about, like right now. But if I don't have something holding my attention, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm going to run around. I'm going to you know, just be a kid, I guess, you know, 50 year old kid. <laughs> and I understand and I appreciate all of you trying to encourage me to just be myself, but this is one of those ugly things in my personality that I've never really liked about me. And I didn't want to share it with all of you. I've mastered it in my trading. I've wrestled it and held it at bay in my trading, but I've never been able to fully overcome it outside of trading. You know, and sometimes I have a impulsiveness that comes over me that I can't really bring down to a point where this is where it originates. This is how it started. This is how it came in. Whereas if you had like an anxiety attack or a panic attack, and if you have never traded with life money or life funds, you'll probably have one. Once you start trading with life funds, you'll, you'll have an anxiety attack. You'll have a panic attack. You'll, you'll feel heart palpitations. You're going to feel like you're having a heart attack. You're going to feel like you're going to pass out. You're going to feel like you're going to be sick. It, it, it's, an overwhelming fear of the world closing in on you. And the reason why that's going to happen is because you're over leveraging and you probably are doing that last trade where you just don't really think you care about the outcome, but you're rolling the dice to see if you can get back from that big drawdown you put yourself into. And right before you know the inevitable blow out of that account, because you're doing something impulsively and you're doing something over leveraged, trading 40 contracts, <laughs> trying to you know, look smart in front of everyone, and then you fail. And you can't catch your breath, those types of things. Well, those panic attacks, those core events of fear that can obviously be dialed back to, okay, this is, this is the reason why it happened. This is why you lost control over yourself because you're being impulsive about the money. But it, bipolarism isn't like that. Sometimes I can be triggered. Yeah. But then sometimes I don't know where it comes from and just starts. And that's why I don't like to do these things. So I'm, just letting you know that it's very difficult for me to do this. And I appreciate all of you that are encouraging me to, to do it. I don't want you encouraging me to be 
wild that that's that's not what I want to do. But and it probably doesn't sound exciting or you know, mostly boring to all of you now. But I want to get through this year teaching and have a lasting impression on you with what I'm trying to communicate, not entertain you. So I titled this one Through the Looking Glass. And the thought came to me this evening when I got an email from a student that uh, obviously has failed. And he wanted to more or less put the fault on me and I just let him know about himself and basically told him to go pound sand. So there's no way anybody on the outside looking in can argue the fact that what I'm telling you before it happens in the marketplace is not rooted in sound logic and it's consistent and it's precise. But there are some that may look at this through the looking glass and see far more than they expected to see. And that's my audience. See, I, I like to give things as an expectation. And then I like going beyond that. I like over delivering. I like doing those types of things. I like conditioning you as my audience and my student base to just expect, well, this is going to be good. But then you're floored because I give you even more than that. And I open up the curtain a little bit more, pull back the veil, and you get to see that there's absolutely crazy precision that's predictable that you can lean on the logic and do these things on your own. Maybe not so much right now, but you're learning. The topic of submitting to trades intraday and seeing folks say in the comment section, they can see it as I'm describing it. And they feel empowered by me explaining beforehand what it ha what happens and what's likely to happen. That's normal. And that's what I'm trying to condition all of you to feel to motivate you. Because it would be very unsuccessful in motivating anyone if I wasn't able to tell you what was going to happen beforehand. Number one, it would communicate, number one, a failure by me to be able to communicate something that I know is real and many of my students for almost seven years now have witnessed it on a day by day basis. You're all getting that experience right now. And it's not something that just started working. It's been like this for a long, long time, but you don't appreciate it until you see it. And when you're in the presence of that live commentary where it's being explained to you this is what it should do watch this here it should do this it shouldn't do that we want to see this we don't want to see that it communicates foresight it communicates the ability of predicting forecasting a reasonable outcome that would otherwise be unknown to everyone else and when you watch that and you're experiencing it when i'm doing the live session or sending out the tweets telling you about what the chart's going to show in your computer or device later on once it unfolds and you see it and you were there and you watched it you saw everything real time through the looking glass it gives you a sense of awe not over me because that's not what this is about but it gives you a sense of awe over the precision the consistency in the day in and day out delivery of price, which should give you reason to not fear, not be concerned about them against us, them guys doing it to us guys. Okay. What we're doing is bringing our collective attention to what those individuals that put these markets in motion. <laughs> what they're doing, we're getting in an alignment with that. You're never, ever, ever, Mr. Morrow, beating the market maker. You're never beating the market maker. Never. Okay. Uh, you will have the privilege 
to learn from me on how to be in alignment with that. You'll understand the concepts that get you safely in and out of conditions that are likely to hurt other traders. You'll learn how to navigate drawdown and not be fearful that just because you've done something incorrectly, and you will, it does not mean that this stuff doesn't work or that they're somehow changing things because if that's what your mindset is revolving around right now, you're feeling panicked. Oh no, I better hurry up and do this because Michael's talked about how hard it's going to be. And I just want to jump in here and interject this part. I had, a black, uh, I had to block a guy earlier today that came back to a discussion that I mentioned in the last Twitter space. And I let myself talk about things that I would never discuss those topics on YouTube, number one. Two, um, they're not really popular topics and because they're very, I mean, I'm already divisive as a person anyway. And in trading, I'm really divisive, which I want to be. I want you to either love what I'm teaching or basically you say, fuck off. I don't care. This guy isn't the right one for me and I'm moving on. Whatever. If you don't want to be here for whatever reason, you need to go. And I don't care the reason why. Don't even don't even wave bye to me. <laughs> Just get the fuck out, right? But if if you warm up to the ideas that I teach something that resonates with you, and I think everybody can resonate with being correct. Everyone can resonate with being on the right side of the marketplace and knowing what it's likely to do next. I mean, who can't warm up to that idea? You can hear when I'm talking about uh, trading, you know, I'm very passionate about it, but I'm not emotionally passionate, elated, out of control, you know, euphoric when I'm talking about price because I've been here before. I'm not scared. I'm not worried about being wrong. And I pretty much know what's likely to happen next. And you've seen that it's, it's, it's not a, it's not an issue, but I brought up topics in the last Twitter space that admittedly was very divisive in my own private mentorship. And some of the students actually quit and had a lot to say about me as a person. And some of them still talk about me in public because I wasn't subscribing to their viewpoint politically or had the view about the things that I talked about in that last Twitter space. And that's fine. I don't care. I mean, you're never going to have dinner with me. You're not coming over my house. You know, we're not going to be buddies and we're not going to have, you know, double dates with our spouses and this, we're not going to have card games. Okay. This is the extent of our relationship. You hear me talk to you. I invest my time and energy into you and your life and your ability to learn how to do this. But if I'm asked a lot about certain things and I've kept myself away from it, eventually it wears on me. And if I'm in a setting like this, something will trigger me and I'll just start talking about the things that's fighting to get in the front of my mind. And vaccines, I'm sure, is one of those topics that some of you may be listening that you just love to go to war about. You want to defend it or you want to go against it. I was literally just telling everybody this was my position on it. This is why. And I'm not asking for people to debate me and I'm not asking for people to agree with me. But when I talk about those topics and I'm telling you why I'm inspired to be doing all of this for fucking free, like I'm pouring into you my time. I have better things to be doing than sitting here talking to people that I'm never going to meet and listening to people bitch about how I'm doing it. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Like I'm, I'm doing this because I want to do it because I know how hard it's going to be. But then when I read folks saying that I'm trying to cultivate fear. I'm trying to teach you not to be fearful, fearful. That's the whole, that's the whole point of me doing this. When I teach about trading, I'm teaching you how to never be fearful, respect the risk. Yes. But not be fearful of it. If you're fearful, if you're paralyzed by the fear or the uncertainty, whether it be about the things that's coming, which you aren't going to be able to stop that. I can't stop it. 
Did you hear me say, oh, I'm going to lose my mind? I'm scared. No, I'm concerned. Yes. Who wouldn't be? But you can't walk around in denial thinking like the last three years didn't happen because there's more things coming. And you need to make your house ready. So I'm trying to give you a skill to help you do that. I'm not trying to scare any of you, but some of you that are very weak. And I was a weak man after 9-11. When that happened, I was paralyzed by fear. And I lived with it for a number of years until I was able to defeat that. I am not a person that has anxiety. I'm not fearful what these fuckers on the internet talk about. I don't give a shit about your bullshit lawsuit. I don't give a shit about what you think you could do in a trading competition. I ain't seen nobody on that leaderboard I recognized yet. I'm not worried about that stuff. That does not bother me. What pisses me off is, well, what I just did there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that part of me. And the other part is, is I wish that I could not give a fuck about people copying me if I go out there and do what I know I can do. What I want to what I want to do is lay waste to every motherfucker out there right now. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. But I know just like you see it seep out in these live streams, that same 20 year old ego is dying to come out. It's dying to come out. And I'm wrestling with that. And I feel like I'm being tested. I mean, that's what I really feel like I'm being tested. And the last two, I've failed. The last two live streams I or Twitter spaces, I've failed. I don't ever get like that when I'm trading. I don't ever, ever let myself get fucking stupid like that and go off the rails and just, you know, psychotic. Now, when I'm done you know, releasing all that stuff, I feel balanced. Once the, once the Twitter space ends, I feel balanced. And then I feel convicted. I feel I shouldn't have done that. And then I feel regret and I feel ashamed and embarrassed. And I feel like I am not a good role model for some of you, especially the young men who may, listen, who may listen to me and think, well, he does that and talks like that. And that sounds empowering. That sounds alpha. It's weak. It's what it is. It's weak. And I wish I didn't do that. But I'm thankful that you all recognize that I'm not in any way, shape, or form emotional, good or bad, when I'm talking to you about what Price is doing. Which is why I've done so well in it. Because it's like meditation. It is allowing me, when I do it, to look through a looking glass and focus on one thing. And because I am serious about the outcome of my precision... It allows me to arm wrestle and subdue all of the other thoughts that are constantly trying to get in the forefront of my mind, distracting me, causing me to doubt this, get angry about that, worry about this, worry about that. Kids, wife wanting me to do this, you know, everything that everybody else has to contend with. When you're bipolar, it, it tends to become a bigger deal than it really is, and you make it more than it really is. And you don't want to, but it's just what happens. But when I'm watching price and I'm expecting a setup or I'm stalking a setup or now because I'm tape reading with all of you, I feel balanced. Like I feel like I'm absolutely laser guided and I don't feel that tug of war that I feel any other time, which is why you see me always talking about this. You ask many times, when do I sleep? Sporadically in four hours. And it's usually whenever I get whatever I want to get done. I don't have a set schedule of sleep. Like, I don't have that. And it's it sounds in, insane. And I guess to the average person, that would be insane because everybody has a bedtime. Everybody you know, gets up at this time. I don't. And sometimes I don't go to sleep for a day or two. And Maybe that's viewed in your eyes as unhealthy. It's just what I've done for years. It's sometimes insomnia. And then other days, it's just I don't have any end to the energy. It just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. So with these sessions where I don't have a filter, 
I have to work very hard to try to stay focused on what it is I want to cover. But I don't want any of you to listen to those last two spaces and think I'm trying to scare any of you because I'm not. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm providing a way for you to prepare. At least that's what my motivation is. And again, I'm reminding you that I don't get paid at all doing these. There's no monetization. And I'm inviting all of you to take them and put them on your YouTube channels and get ad revenue. I don't give a flying fuck. I don't care. I don't care. So I use these to decompress. And they're not going to be eloquent sometimes. They're not going to be, you know, children friendly. You should absolutely never have these playing with children around because you don't know what I'm going to say. You don't know when I'm going to have a, a shift in my mood where it may not be like I can feel it winding up in me like it's there. But I don't. I don't want to be. Uncivilized, that's I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I don't want to be in a position where. The father or the mother or the couple. They're listening to this, expecting the same inner circle trader that's on YouTube, the boring, dry, uh, dry, mundane <laughs> delivery of, okay, but I put people to sleep over there. And I understand, but here that I don't have the, the safety net like I do when I do recorded sessions where I can edit out those things. And I might go off and start talking about things that are, you know, not so uh, family friendly. And use language that, you know, if I was in better control of myself, I wouldn't reach for. So for those individuals that do have children and have made the mistake of trusting me in these instances and having that in your mind is this is how I'm going to talk. And then you hear that. You know, I apologize for that. But I can't. It's not like I come here. I, I'm not wanting to do that. So anyway, monologue's over. So when we're looking at uh, price action, and you've probably seen enough of it over the last couple of weeks now, there's a lot of different approaches that trading can give you for a model approach, uh, what style of trade you're going to be. You're going to be a day trader. You're going to be a scalper. Are you going to trade the entire daily range? You're going to be a short-term trader. You're going to hold overnight and, or over the weekend. Or you're going to be a swing trader and hold for a couple of weeks, which right now that would be extremely ballsy like that. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of gap risk. You have no idea what's going to cause, you know, a, an extreme gap. We might have an extreme gap on Sunday tomorrow. Like we may see it open up way, 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 way far away from where we closed on Friday. Why? Well, we got that big liquidity pool resting below that daily low I've talked about in Euro dollar. Um, we have the liquidity pool above those relative equal highs and that volume of balance on the daily chart for dollar. So they could start the week right up there. And then that makes the rest of the week a little bit more challenging because it could open up there for dollar and then trade back down to where we closed on Friday, consolidate around a little bit, and then it has to wrestle and go back up through that again to continue higher if it's where it's going to go. So what I do on the weekends, and what's, this is what I've been doing now since 2020, is I'm basically watching the headlines and seeing what's what's happening around the world. Now, I'm not sitting in there, you know, in my boxer shorts, hair uncombed, unbathed, <laughs> unshaven. Well, I guess I'm unshaven, but it's it, it's grown for a reason. But, uh, you know, not, not looking like uh, I'm strung out on anything. You know, I'm not flipping out watching all the, the news and panicking. I'm literally just going through headlines and articles and trying to stay abreast of what they're doing around the world and what you know, might be an issue come Sunday's opening. Throughout the week, obviously, I spend a lot of time with all of you. And when we look at charts daily, it's my hope that you're learning to see how these things come to fruition, the organization of how they form in price action. When I call something out 
on Twitter and tweet saying, okay, look at this, look at that. Uh, you can, the real students can hear me say when I'm really expecting the price run in a specific you know, direction where I think it's going to go, that type of thing. And they're the ones I'm trading. They're the ones you see examples later on. And it's not ambiguous. It's very specific. We're not calling buys and sells every single time I mention something, but I'm bringing your attention to a specific PD array. If I talk about a fair value gap, most of the time, when you hear me mention fair value gap, a new student that's never really spent the last two weeks with me, they'll think, okay, well, he thinks it's a buy because right now we're above it. That doesn't mean what I'm saying that at all. I'm saying that that's why we're watching that next. And if it can go through that, I'm, I may be bearish. I'm, I'm building the idea that I'm thinking the market's likely to go lower longer term. And I'm going to watch that fair value gap that would be below price. What would that be indicative of? I want to see it lose ground. I don't want to see it respected at all. So that's the difference with some you know, joker that's literally trying to find something to talk about because he can't fucking make money in Texas. Or someone is looking at these things and saying, okay, what is he taking my attention to for? Because he's looking at this fair value gap, but he's also talking about how it could go down to a specific level. So it would seem confusing to a new trader or a new student or a new observer, but it's not to someone that's been watching me. If you've been in the live sessions also on YouTube, you can see how I talk about how I want to see it go through this fair value gap and then come back down into it and act as what support if I'm bullish. I want to see certain things unfold. That is narrative that cannot be taught at least i can't i don't know how to teach it in a book like i don't know how to write a chapter i don't know how to send a bunch of tweets i can't tell you audibly like this like you got to watch me do it that, that's the only way i can describe it i, I don't and I'm, I, I might not be successful this year that's what i'm afraid of that's why i said you know if you have any faith Pray for me to be successful in this because I'm trying very hard to find a way to reach as many of you as I can because I know, I know that there will be some that I won't reach. And it's not for a lack of trying because <laughs> I'm fucking trying. But it's very difficult for me to explain something that needs to be viewed real time watching it happen and explaining why this is the case, which is why most of the people out there that have tried to take my content and make their own little mentorships and shit. That's why they won't ever do what I'm doing. And Dave, I see your tweet saying that you do more than me and you know, all that business. I would love to see you live stream this, this week, but don't put all that stuff on your charts, keep your charts clean and I'll be able to I'll watch it. I can't watch it when it's all that scribble stuff on there. No disrespect. But you're talking a lot of stuff right now, and now I want to see you do it. So Dave teaches FX. I think that's what your your Twitter space is or something, or maybe it's your YouTube channel. Um, now everybody knows about you, and I'll be watching your live stream this week. So entertain me. I want to see what you're doing. If it's foolishness, I'm not going to watch it, okay? I'm not going to be there to troll you, but I think I know what you're trying to do. So now you got my attention. Show me what you're doing, okay? But there's a lot of people out there that have tried to try to teach what it is that I do. And they're not doing that right at all. They're not. It's just like order blocks. And it, that is a topic that I've guarded because it's something that I know once you fully understand it, you'll know exactly what you're doing. Not that you need that specific concept because you don't, because I have not been talking a lot about order blocks lately. It's just been primarily what? Fair value gaps. So when we see these things live and you watch me over the shoulder explaining certain things, it's more practical because there's no way for me to be able to tell you what many of you ask a lot is, well, how do you know, you know, which one it's going to form today. That's the uncertainty. Like you see these people out there, they'll say, oh yeah, ICT says he knows about the algorithm, but he, he doesn't know this right at this moment. You're, you're right. I don't know where they're going to open the price up on Sunday. 
Nobody knows that. And I have to eventually sleep sometimes. So I'm going to miss moves. That's what I said. You're going to miss moves too. You can't be in every swing. And that's taking things, cherry picking out of what I say and out of context to make your bullshit narratives when you want to troll and you want to hate, which is silly. It's your, your comedy to me. But when we watch Price, I don't know. I do not know if there's going to be a fair value gap within a specific range yet. I don't know that. I have to wait to see if they're going to book it that way, if it's going to run off and leave it. I don't know if there's going to be a breaker. I don't know that. It might be just these one pass down and straight up and no opportunity for a breaker to form. Those are the things that I don't know. I don't know that. Those things I have to wait for, just like you have to wait for. But you're learning, which is the parts I did say in my lectures and my teachings, that not every PD array is going to form. Just because I've outlined it in, a, in a, a matrix saying this is the normal order of everything, you've also been introduced to other PD arrays, like the New Week Opening Gap, New Day Opening Gap, Implied Fair Value Gap. Fair Value Gap, you know, that implied fair value gap can occur anywhere. And you just have to observe it when it's there. And unfortunately, you know, some of you are already trying to talk about it and point to it, and they're not there in your examples. And that's unfortunate because you many times have a YouTube channel or you have a following on social media. And because you use the new the new name and term that I've introduced to every one of you, they get excited. Like, oh yeah, I see it and I understand it too. And it's it's many times like watching a guy do a magic trick and the guy thinks he knows how to do it. And then he, he tries it and he fails. And then he's angry that you didn't give him enough time to do it right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's very, it's very difficult managing all of these personalities. And I've opened up a Pandora's box by having all of you, like literally, you know, where you can reach to me on Twitter. Like I, nobody, nobody can hide your comment. Anyone that sends anything to me, they can see that. I just choose not to listen to assholes. But the biggest trolls, none of my biggest trolls are blocked. They're not. They'll lie to you and say they are, but they're not. And if they say I'm blocked, they need to log into their Twitter and look at my profile right there and show the 250,000 250, followers and show that they're blocked because they're not. So when we have um, opportunities to see things live in the live streams and when I don't want to do it, here's kind of like where I'm getting at. And this is what I was doing, I think, you know, one day this week where I said I wanted to do something, I was really wrestling with my mood swings. And I just, I, I was like, I, I can't, there's no way I was going to be able to conduct myself in a manner where it, it would have been good. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be on, I will not go on YouTube live stream and be like I am here. And I knew looking at price even that day, because I was angry about one, one of my sons, he has a, girlfriend that uh, we don't think is you know healthy for them right now they're too young and there's too much drama with it so my wife and i had a discussion and i'm very opinionated about it i don't want certain things to be done and she's coming around to my way of seeing things today but uh, that day you know i just I, I couldn't i couldn't bring myself to be in a live setting with all of you because I was angry. I was very angry and there was no way for me to really focus. Even looking at price, I, it would have been difficult for me to, to keep my focus on that. So I just went to Twitter and said, okay, here's what I see right now. Here's what I see right now. And you probably already saw that there wasn't a whole lot of it, but the things I shared was dialed in enough for you all to see that it's still working and it's fine. The idea of these funded accounts and the five handle moves and such, I see a lot of you are getting confident with that now. And I appreciate your willingness to share your observations and such. And I love the fact that the, I made this much money with this trade. ICT has toned down. 
I, I appreciate all of you helping me in that regard because it creates an emotionally charged endeavor here where I'm loving what I'm doing, but I don't want any of you to get hurt. And if you're pushing the button and you're trying to, you know, impress me, you're not impressing me. Even if you make a lot of money, I'm going to be angry. Like I, I'm, if, if someone's been trading for a while before I started this mentorship, you know, and some of you obviously have, and you know, you're the one, okay, that's one thing, but anyone that's just started training with me this year, and you're trying to do what I'm teaching in a, in a funded account or a live account, please don't tell me about it. I don't want to know. Okay. Because every time someone tells me they're making money, my first question is how long you've been doing it? Because if it's something that you just did, it's your first time, then, okay, I understand where you're going with it. And I understand your excitement, but if it's something you've been doing for a while and you're able to land that, then, okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'll like that. I'll appreciate it. And I can high five that. Yeah. But I don't know how much time you've invested in this. And I don't want to, to inspire you to want to be doing that when you don't know how to trade yet. Because the whole point of me doing this mentorship with you all this year is to teach you, number one, how to read price. When I was doing my mentorship that was paid for, it was all about watching price. Don't press your demo account. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because the outcome is then emotional. And now you're looking through that looking glass at these candlesticks with an expectation of, I have to be right because now I have money behind it. Because if I'm wrong, I'm losing money. You see the difference there? I, it's, it's really hard to, to justify how that isn't the best advice. Like it, it's, it is the best advice, but it doesn't feel like the best advice when you have something to sell and you want people to come to your bullshit and try to buy it, whether it be a mentorship or some horse shit, you know, pseudo algo box bullshit. Cause that ain't, that ain't algorithmic. That's retail stuff. And when you have these competitions for everyone's attention and you're trying to inspire them to go out there and trade, unfortunately, I know enough to know that the average person doesn't have the mental faculties to do this, let alone be doing it quickly and successfully, regardless of what medium or approach to trading, even mine, which I think is superior to every fucking thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the marketplace. I'm telling you, it. I'm showing it to you. I'm proving it to you. There ain't a motherfucker out there doing it. Dave, we'll see this week, won't we? <laughs> the, the worst thing you can do is be inspired by me or anyone else to go out there and try to trade and feel like you're ready. Because these same people that tell you to do that, they're falling on their face when they try to do it right in front of you in their live streams. Or they won't ever do it. They won't ever step out there and tell you what they think real time every fucking day. Because they know they will fail. And they'll pull some comedy show to try to cover it up. No, there's no emotion. There's no emotion. It's This is what it is. Market's going to do this or the market's going to do that. If you don't know, you say you don't know. But you better not say I don't know every day. Because then, guess what? You don't know. And there's a lot of people that are upset right now. Because your attention is being placed with what I'm sharing and what you're doing right now. You're listening to me talk about something that to them, you shouldn't be listening to this. You should be listening to them because they're showing you something that has a price tag on it. I have nothing with a price tag on it. I have the truth. I'm showing it to you. I'm proving it to you. So when you look at me and what I'm sharing, you're looking through that looking glass. And you should be seeing fucking proof, evidence. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that I hope I can help. And I'm not asking any of you to represent me, not even to advertise for me, nothing. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that at all. But there are a great number of you that 
genuinely do not know what the hell you're doing. And some of them are very entertaining, crashing and burning. And you know who you are, Texas Pete. But there's other ones that are very sincere out there, that they are cordial to their audience. They're very respectful, mon you know, modest. And they just aren't doing very well. They're not really doing well. And like, I want to save them. <laughs> okay. I got this white knight complex. And some of you men might know what this feels like. I had the same thing with my first wife. You know, she had a lot of issues. And I wanted to be, you know, the knight in shining armor. I wanted to help her. I wanted to save her from our issue. And that's pretty much at the core of my heart why I teach the way I do. I am sympathetic to all of you because I know exactly how all of you feel. You feel like you're alone. You feel like you you, know, you need support and who the hell are you going to get the support from? Your friends and family don't know anything about this shit and they don't believe that it's going to be possible. And it's not the same thing just reading other people's tweets and reading other people's social media stuff or listening to people with their sports cars and their vacations and shit but they're not showing you them executing trades. Here's a trade I took. Remember, you're looking through that looking glass. What are you seeing when you look around? Me included. Through that looking glass, are you seeing a reason to invest your time in whatever it is that you're looking at? Or in this case, listening to. Because if it is not capturing you, overtaking you, and subduing you, and holding you and your attention because you see obvious signs of professionalism, precision, logic that makes perfect sense, that is explained before it happens, not ambiguous, not 50-50, not it might do this, it might do that, which is what everybody that doesn't like me will say. But they're leaving out the parts where I say, but this is what I want to have happen. This is what I'm looking for. I'm waiting for this. This is my setup. This is my trade. If I'm wrong, this is what it's going to do. And I won't be, I won't be in the trade. I won't, I won't be hurt by it because I'm looking for this trade to unfold. That's what you want to learn from a person that can obviously outline what makes this work. How will you fail? How can I do certain steps to avoid failing? Avoiding entirely is impossible. But much like when you're in flight school and you're trying to learn how to fly, what's one of the things they put you through as a, a pilot? You ever think about that? They take you up there and they tell you to turn the fucking engine off while you're in the fucking air. Like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? But hey, they got to teach you how to do what? A controlled landing. You might take off. It might be beautiful. You're up there in the sky. You're, you're sailing around, looking down, thinking this is great. And then your instructor says, oh, by the way, today's the day where we tell you to turn the fucking engine off. Figure it out. <laughs> and I'm sure that there's a great deal of anxiety when that happens. I'm sure that, you know, everyone that thinks that they're going to be ready for that moment because everyone that goes into flight school knows that that's coming. And maybe they don't have it in unannounced. I'm trying to you know, be funny, obviously, because I'm not a pilot. But I couldn't do that. I, 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 I honestly, I know, I know I'd flip out. There's no way. There's, first of all, I could not have the, the focus. You wouldn't want me. <laughs> you wouldn't want Ratchet ICT flying your ass anywhere in an airplane because we're probably going to get down real fast and not the down that you want to get down with. And so, <laughs> so then imagine that same thing occurring in trading. That's what's happening when you get out there with live funds, live money, Listening to people that tell you to get there and trade sooner than you should when they themselves can't prove that they're doing it right either. And you can't build your faith in anyone based on here's a trade I took. Here's a trade I took. Approach to selling something is the worst possible thing in the world. But unfortunately, in this industry, looking through the looking glass. 
you're going to look for what you want to see, especially if you're really new. And what I try to do is be, number one, responsible as a mentor. I'm not trying to take anyone down the primrose lane. And if I was a fucking fraud and a failure at doing this, you would have seen it by now. You absolutely would have seen it by now. My calls would have been failing miserably. They would not be going exactly where I said it was going to go when I said it was going to go there. So I'm a little bit different. I'm cut from a different cloth to everybody else. And that's fine. That's exactly how I want it to be. I'm not going to teach everything because that makes me who I am. I'm not obligated to do that, but I can teach the rest of my life. And that's fine. That's great. I'm keeping my promise. But I did not... I didn't accept this responsibility under the guise that I have to, what, teach everything I know because I can't. But what I've already taught, if I stopped right now, you are light years ahead of every fucking Mickey Mouse bullshit that's out there. You literally have, you have an unbelievable arsenal. But much like when you first handled a firearm. Oh, here we are. We're talking about topic. I don't like that. Uh, look past it, okay? You never handled an AR-15. Never broke it down, never cleaned it, never did any of that stuff. Well, until you do it, you don't know, right? And that's what this is like. You have to be conditioned. You have to be trained. And then after a while, it becomes second nature. You just know. You know. And Maybe some of you are going to have to take a little bit more time than just this year. And guess what? That's absolutely acceptable. It's acceptable. And you have to give yourself permission because if you wrestle with that or fearful, what if I don't learn it? Because I, I, I've told you there's a deadline to me doing this everyday live streaming stuff. Obviously, you've seen this week. It wasn't every day, was it? I told you to prepare yourself because there's sometimes my personal life may take precedence. Remember, I'm not obligated to do this. But you're going to find that if you're pressing yourself into a time delivery of you being successful, when you do that, and when you do this with everything that you try to rush through, like, like weight loss or gaining muscle or, or trying to get flexible, whatever it is, you can't force a timeline, deadline. This is when it's going to have to be. You don't know. You don't know when you're going to hit that weight goal. You don't know when you're going to get that bench press goal. You don't know when you're going to get that threshold of crossing over in your experience where you know you can trade live funds. None of you can time that. None of you can do that. None of you. Why? Because you have no idea what the variable rate of understanding is going to be for you. It's all unique to you. You can't say, learn it in 40 days, learn it in 120 days, learn it in six months, one week workshop. It, that, that's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. You can't do those things and expect the outcome to be universally the same. Absolutely not. And it's not even going to be in the majority. That's why these people that market that kind of stuff, they fail. That's why they're failing. And they don't like what they're seeing with me because they see me teaching with a demo. They see people going out. What I'm teaching with a, a demo, they're going out there and making six figures with real money and being interviewed by companies that paid them that money. That's hurting their ass. Their assholes are chapped. And I love that. There's nothing you can do about that. You can't argue it. You can't wrestle with it. I mean, I guess you can wrestle with it, but you're going to lose. And all of you that are paying attention and looking around, you're seeing folks do that. And I have an inbox full of shit like that now. And you're all going to see their faces. And I'm going to do my best to have a outline. The same questions I'm going to ask. I'm going to let each person know what they are. So that way they're not put on the spot. They can talk freely. They have already collected their thoughts about how I'm going to. Because I don't want to be longer than an hour. That way I'm going to ask the questions and I'm going to sit there and let them talk. I, I don't need to be hurt. I'm, well, I want them to tell me what they've done, what their routine is. How did they get started? What was their biggest fear that they overcame? Where's their, where's their goals and what's their plan on getting there? 
You know, these are the types of questions I'm going to ask. And everybody's going to have shit different. And that's going to be interesting. I know it's going to, for me, it's going to be, I don't give a shit if anybody else likes it. I'm giving these students the opportunity for me to sit down with them as close as face to face can be. Yes, I will show my face there. And you'll see I have more than one white cap. <laughs> I have other colors too, guys. <laughs> I might shave my head because everybody wants to see me bald in summertime. I might do it. I ain't afraid of it. So the, <laughs> the, <laughs> good grief. <laughs> You'll hear these folks give you their stories and share. And I'm going to treasure that. Like, that's exactly what I want this to, to morph into. I'm doing this because I want all of you to be generous with your story with me. Tell me what it is that you're doing. If you want notoriety, apparently I have an audience that looks at this stuff. And I'm going to share if you want me to. Not that I'm going to do it, you know, without your blessing. But if you want your socials shared. You know, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. So it gives you a stage. You know, if it, like there's a young man out there, um, Paladin, you know, he's trying to get a course together, how how to beat these funded accounts and have, you know, all that stuff. He might be teaching some of the stuff that he uses while he's doing it, that he's learned from me. I don't give a fuck. OK, I don't care because, number one, he's publicly stated that, you know, I had a small a small part of what he was able to do. and. That's wonderful because now they know me and then when they hear me, they talk about, you know, how did you learn? And I give all the glory to God. That's how I want it. That's the exchange right here. OK, that's all I want. But he, you know, he was trying he's trying to build a course or whatever, you know, or some kind of mentorship to get funded and, and pass them. You know what? Go for it. That's something I'd get behind. Say, you know what? Do it. And some of you may be wanting to run signal services. And guess what? I have a lot of students that can't do this. When's the last time you heard any educator, any guru, furu, tell you they got failed students? Everybody makes money with their bullshit, right? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. It's real. I don't lie. The bottom line is this. This stuff is complex. This skill set isn't going to happen overnight. And a lot of people came to me like they go to anybody else. Give me the one, two, three, fast track. I need to learn how to make money right now. I'm broke. And if you can't do it, you're a fraud. Fuck you. How's that work for you? The bottom line is this. You're going to work your ass off in this industry no matter what you do. Period. Period. And time is going to be a whole lot more spent than you wanted to spend. It's going to take you longer. It's going to be more effort on your part. You want to learn how to trade? I've already taught you. You want a routine on how to go in and do those things. That's exactly what I'm teaching you this year. A day in and day out. This is what we're looking for. This is what it looks like. This is how it repeats. And we aren't afraid of signals drying up and not working anymore. I know that I'm going to have a setup. And this is what pisses people off that don't like me. I always have something. I always have an ace up my sleeve. You're damn right I do. Because that was a weakness. I needed to know I had more weapons than just a stochastic and a moving average. Because that shit didn't hold up long. And the markets are, are more dynamic than just one way. You have to have a tool that is useful for any market profile. It doesn't mean that you're going to trade every single time because you have that tool. It just means that you know enough that the thing you're probably going to use if you were less equipped, experienced, you would have tried to use in an environment, which is what most of my students, when they first come to my YouTube channel, they think everything's a fucking optimal trade entry. They think every rally up is going to set up a sell and every rally down is going to set up a long. And they send me emails. They'll say things in the comment section. You know, I tried the optimal trade entry and I get stopped out. How do you know which one's the optimal trade entry? Well, what are you doing wrong? Looking through the looking glass you're looking for entries only. You have no context as to what you're doing. There's no narrative being applied to the chart. You haven't even consulted the higher time frame. So is it surprising why you're looking at something on the smallest degree of importance, which is the entry? I've stated this so many times and it's almost like you guys don't want to believe me when I'm being honest. Entry patterns are numerous 
There's so many entry techniques that get you into the moves. But there's only one side of the narrative that's going to develop in price. That's it. You're not going to change that. The buying, selling, and pressure doesn't change it. The narrative is going to unfold. And that's just the way it is. And if you're not able to get on side with that, that means get in alignment, get in sync with it. Any entry techniques, I can give you the best ones I have. And it's going to fucking fail for you because you aren't looking at what? You're not looking at the underlying pinnings of the marketplace. What makes this market most likely to go higher? And where the hell is it going? Just because you think it's going up, where is it going to? Because if you don't know that, you're going to overstay your welcome or exit far too soon. And if you look at what I'm teaching and how I teach it, I'm teaching you when to time to market, when to build a model that is bullish, when the bearish model is expected, when the market's going to be in consolidation and try not to be expanding with your, uh, not expanding, but entering with your trades, expecting the market to expand out of that range because it's most likely to do what? Consolidate ahead of a, a big report. So you're not going to, you're not going to be guessing you don't, you don't want to go into this guessing. If, if at the end of this year, you're feeling like you have no idea where you're at in price, I promise you this. You did not pay attention. You did not take notes and you did not back test. And that, that's the bottom line. That is the absolute truth. And I know that there's going to be people that are going to be lazy as fuck this year. They're only going to watch the videos. They're only going to watch the live streams and try to get trades out of what I'm saying. And then they've learned nothing. And they'll be the same yahoos that were paying me money to learn how to do this. And I'm calling the market every single fucking day. Every single month, and it's going where I said it was going to go, and I'm proving the concepts work, and here it is. It's going on and on and on. I got people that make money in that group, whether it be the 2016 group or the 2021, the last one. Every one of those groups, every one of those years, I have winning, profitable students. Every single one of those groups, I have students that have never made a dime with it. What's the common denominator? They have not done what, we're, what I'm telling them to do. And they've done everything I told them not to do. The ones that end up making money, they're the ones that maybe they fucked off in the beginning, tried their own way mentorship stuff, lost, learned from that, and then started doing what I said. Or they never fucked off and they followed my instructions and right, right from the beginning found their way into profitability. I'm sorry that it's harder than you thought it was going to be, but that doesn't make me a fucking fraud when I'm out here proving it every fucking day. Sorry. Sorry. It must suck to be you because you're literally looking outside yourself for a reason to exist and live with yourself. Because if you think that this stuff doesn't work after seeing as much of the evidence of this on a day by day basis with such a degree of precision, you are the problem. Just like I was the problem when I first started. But you don't want to recognize that. Trading, this industry, is the looking glass. What do you see when you see through it? Do you see problems that you got to work on? Character flaws that you have to correct? Build coping mechanisms? Being bipolar, it's not a matter of what I eat, folks. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate some of you that are sending me that shit, but it has nothing to do with it. It's all in my brain. Okay, I'm literally struggling to be sane sometimes. It's it's very difficult, and I will not ever take a drug that is going to make me not focus like I need to be focusing. I will live the rest of my life like this, wrestling with it, and it sucks. It does. It sucks. But I will never be medicated. I will not. So, you know, that's the that's the wrestling match I chose to be in. But you're gonna you're gonna see things through this industry in other people. You're gonna see arrogance when there isn't any justification for it. You're gonna see modesty when they should be beating their chest. You're gonna see folks fail miserably 
and deny that it was them. Them. Not the material. Not the concepts that other people around the world are doing the same stuff with it. And, well, not the same stuff, but they're using the same concepts and they're making real money. Life-changing money. Some of you are new and you haven't had that experience yet. And I will have that interview with you as well. If you're willing to have it, no problem. I would love to continue that part into 2024 and beyond. I'd like to do like a one, you know, one a week type thing. That way it allows me, number one, to live my life once you get through this. Because I don't want to be doing everyday interview because it takes time to be doing all that stuff. And I don't want to be held to a schedule. But I would love to be able to sit down with one each week, maybe only come on a Friday. And uh, it's an hour long in, in, in time. That's what my plan is. And just listen to someone that has gone through it. You know, I would love to see people come in and say, yeah, I thought you were a fucking scammer. <laughs> I thought you were a scammer and a fraudster. And then, uh, you know, I just thought you're, oh, I'm going to take this guy's shit and challenge it and, and prove it wrong. And then now I'm making money and this is the best decision I ever made. I, I, that's the, that's the interviews I'm waiting to have. Yeah. You know, Cause I, I understand I have a lot of supporters and you guys are making money and that's wonderful. I really get off. I get my rocks off when I have someone converted. Like I feel like I've, you know, I've really earned something there. I, I, I've gone through a lot of shit over the years and listened to a lot of shit and willfully put myself in a situation where I'm going to catch a lot of shit because I'm literally out here demo balling and I've done it for years. And it, you can't say anything that's going to hurt me because I have the goods. I can prove it and I'm going to do it in your face with a demo account and you can't find profitability in any of the shit you're doing. So it's it's been fun for me to do that. And the people that have looked at what I do and look past the things I told you, just look past that. If it's real, you'll see it. If it resonates with you, run with it. And if you have the passion to stick with it, you will be profitable. You will fucking make fucking money here. And that's just the way it is. But you have to be here every day learning what it is that you have to discover is going to be the reasons why you're going to derail. Because you will. And how you react and how you think about yourself, your trading and this industry, once you experience loss. One of the best things that could ever happen is for you to experience losing an account. What do you say? Yeah, that's the worst. That's the worst thing in your mind that could ever happen right now as a student, right? That's the worst thing. How could anybody say that's the best thing? Because you'll know what it feels like to have one moment where you didn't even see it coming. And then, boom, you don't have anything in the account. At least not enough to take another trade. I think every trader needs to experience that. Because then you'll respect the risk. What happens if you do blow an account, but you don't respect the risk and you go out there and you just do the same thing with the second one? Here's what you're not observing. What you're seeing in that, but ignoring, is that you are impulsive and a gambler. And that means you have to do some work. You have to correct that. And it's not easy because you are the person that's driving that. And you're doing it recklessly because you need an outward, outside of you, confirmation. That's why you're doing it. You're trying to do something Olympic-sized, over-leveraging an account, trying to get some kind of big win so that way you can feel like you are formidable you can make a lot of money look at this this makes you a this makes you a good trader no it doesn't it does not make you a good trader it makes you an impulsive gambler and guess what sometimes impulsive gamblers go to casinos and make a lot of money but impulsive gamblers don't go to casinos every day or every week or every month of the year and make lots of money professional gamblers are not impulsive gamblers they're calculated money managers and they're utilizing the cards as what? Their multiplier. They don't know what the next turn on that card is going to be. They don't know what hand's going to be given to them. They don't know. And they embrace that uncertainty, which is the equivalent of us doing what in trading? We don't know what that next candle is going to do. They could drop a bomb somewhere 
and boom, the market gaps completely outside what your chart, what your chart's showing, especially some of you what I was talking about today in the lecture this morning. You're so zoomed in and you had just a handful of candlesticks. Like it's only going to move 10 handles at most. Like you have to have some data on your chart. That's the reason why you're not holding your trades as long because you have no, you have no visibility. You're too close to the forest or too close to the trees to see the forest. You're, you're, you have your nose on one tree and the only thing you can see is that bark on that one tree. That's exactly what every YouTuber is doing. There isn't one YouTuber out there that I've seen that has enough data on their chart to make balanced decisions. You're looking at it too close. And when you do get a winner, I'm in your audience sometimes. And I'm thinking to myself, what are you talking about? You're going to close it. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? But it's, it's your trade and it would be rude of me. It would be rude of me to overtake and say, this is what's going to happen. But I have sometimes tossed out numbers <laughs> that said, like here, like a like a like a gentle nudge, like here, look look there, look there, and then not don't take your profits in the next five handles. And I, I don't I don't want to override someone when they're in a live stream because it's rude and it's already bad enough when I show up and I try to help someone with their you know, with their audience and help build them up and tell them, you know, I'm, I'm in your audience right now. I'm watching what you're doing. And then invariably the, the folks that know that I'm there, or if I invite all of you, Hey, ICT's in the house. <laughs> what the f it's not, I don't want you doing that. And it's rude. It would piss me off. It would drive me fucking crazy. Like, like seriously, like I understand if, you know, somebody showed up in a, in a, in a live setting and they're a celebrity, but I'm not a fucking celebrity. I'm literally nobody. And given my, given you my attention or giving me your attention in somebody else's live streaming chat box is rude. That's fucking rude. <laughs> Don't do that. But these same YouTubers who I sometimes adore because they are doing something that takes a lot of balls to do it and seeing them discover themselves in the presence of other people, man, that, that takes a shit. That takes a lot of courage, a lot of courage. And Patrick, if you're listening, um, my advice, and you can take this with a grain of salt, but I guarantee you, if you don't engage the chat and you just do you, let them say whatever the fuck they're going to say. Who cares? The chat window, whoever's talking to the chat window, they're not really fucking worried about price. They're just hanging out. They want to be a part of the click. That's what that all is. And you're, they're not going to learn anything anyway. So just let them have fun in there. Who cares? But if you're there doing what you're doing, I mean, you can find trades. I mean, we can see you doing it, man. Just focus on what it is you're doing and fuck the bullshit. Don't let them, don't let them distract you. That's why I will never do that. I can't have a window where people can talk because I'm going to look at the cars going by and I'm going to chase the right one. <laughs> That's what they want. They want me distracted. I'm never going to give that to them. I'm not going to do that. And you're easily taken out of gear, bro. And when you lock it down, the best thing you could do is just turn that shit off. Not for the members. Let them go there and talk. That's fine. But you don't look at it. Just have a one-way conversation, man. People are there to listen to you. That's why they're coming. When I show up and I'm in your stream, I'm there to watch you. I'm there. I'm watching you. I'm watching your mannerisms. I'm reading your face. I'm reading your eyes. I'm watching how you talk. I'm watching you fidget around in your chair. I'm watching you shift around. I'm watching you get frustrated when it ain't working. I'm listening to how you talk to yourself. I'm watching all that stuff. To me, it's a social experiment. I'm watching you find yourself, and I'm also watching you wrestle yourself. And this is exactly what I talk about all the time, which is the reason why I invite everybody to go to you. Because if you wrestle all these things that you're com competing with inside you, and I hope you're not being offended by what I'm saying here, because I'm saying everything with love, bro. I'm not trying to judge you. I, nothing I'm saying here should be viewed as negative. Like, I'm telling you that what you're doing is very courageous. And I'm hoping that you will be successful more than you already are. 
And I'm hoping that you just just consider what I'm saying and just try it out. It might not work for you, and that's fine. I'm not trying to take credit for anything that you do in the future. All I'm trying to do is be a help. That's all. But what you go through and the things that you're experiencing, and then you say, oh, fuck, this fucking trade, this, that's negative self-talk. And that negative self-talk has such an impact, such a huge impact on what you're going to do. And you're, and you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it in a setting that's absolutely incredible in terms of difficulty, which takes huge fucking balls. Like to do that, number one, in front of anybody, you know, in a live audience setting takes, takes a lot of courage. And if you're trying to discover what it is that you're going to be excelling in as a trader while doing that and allowing other people to give you feedback. And sometimes, you know, what's going to happen. Assholes are going to show up because they suck. They literally can't do it themselves and they want to make themselves feel good if they can wreck your mindset. So deny them that and still do what you're doing. If you're distracted with what other people are saying, like, why don't you try to trade like this? And why don't you fuck that opinion or question? Who gives a shit? You know what you want to do when you see it in the chart. Like anybody else. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It isn't, that's the thing you're looking for. You're waiting for that thing. And if you let other people get inside your head and take your mind off of what it is you're looking for, whether it be a student of mine or whether it be someone that's pretending to be a student of mine by talking shit about me, which I think is really what's going on. I think there's people out there and you know who I'm talking about. They're trying to make our community look like a bunch of assholes by going into other live streamers and shit. And that's why I'm not going to invite anybody anymore because that's what's been going on. But I just I you know what YouTubers I'm listening to. Patrick, you know, I'm in yours. Trades by Matt, you know, I'm in yours. And the other YouTubers are just uploads. There's and the other ones. I'm not going to tell you who they are because I use their chat windows for sentiment. <laughs> and I don't want them to think I'm being an asshole because that's not what it is. I have nothing against the YouTubers themselves, but they have a rich chat window that is a wonderful sentiment indicator. So I've said that before. But Patrick posted the. Uh, a comment about how, and he's, he's also said it several times in, in his live streams. I'm talking about Patrick Whelan. Um, he does a live stream every morning on YouTube and uh, trades the morning session and such. And I think he's a cool character. He's funny a lot of times. Um, <laughs> and I'm, it, I'm very interested in seeing how he finds himself in all this, but still hopefully maintains that character because it's edgy. It is going to work really, really well if he knows what he's doing and he's consistent with it. Not there's a lot of emotion, and which is normal. Like he, he's he's a roller coaster of emotions, which many times I think is why people go to watch him. And when he makes it and kills it, you know, it, he's doing his normal everyday man flex where he gets the touchdown, he does his dance, and you know he's cheerleading himself, whatever. That question he posed several times about how he needs to find a way to hold on to these trades a little bit longer. And then now when he tries to do that, he gets burned because he has winning trades and turns back on him. And I think he's dabbling with the idea of doing partials, which Patrick, that is the absolute best fucking thing in the world because they always make money. Partials always profit. Every single fucking time. There's never been a partial profit that didn't make money. That's that's an absolute 100% win. Every single time it has a 100% win rate. You can't beat it. It is what it is. The problem is once you taste $4,000, $5,000 winning days, the impulse is to keep chasing that, like that first high. You know, when you see these folks in the eight, well, back when I was younger, you, you would see these folks on cocaine and that first time they took cocaine like they want to chase that high they never get it again they never can get that same one again but they constantly keep going back to it wanting to get that same high i don't have personal experience in that shit but in the 80s that was the drug of choice and we saw a lot of it 
and it was in the movies. It was in culture. It was, you know, that was the, the, the fashion drug at the time. Well, when you're trading and you get that high of a big win, that's a high that you want to get back almost limitlessly. Like you, you want, as soon as you got out of the trade, you're thinking, man, that was great. Let me go again. Like there's something in the chart that's going to give you that same 15 handle run again. It's it's done. Like you got to stop. So a lot of the things that I hear him talk about, whether he realizes it, is some of the things I've been talking about in my lectures. I'm using him as like a model to help coach. While I'm not actively saying I'm teaching him, I'm using the things that he's making public as a point of concern for himself or personal goals, or he's reflecting on what he feels he's done incorrectly and wishes he had a way to overcome it. I'm using the, that model of him and where he, what he's focusing on or contending with, I'm using that in my lectures. So while I'm not drawing special attention, obviously you know now, but I'm not trying to say, look, I'm your mentor. You know, that's not what it is. I'm just trying to be a help. That's all. And I, hopefully uh, by this real world person trying to do this, if you can learn from the advice I'm giving and, and say he doesn't take this in consideration and doesn't do anything with it or tries it and says it didn't work for me. Okay, that's fine. If somebody else that's listening to everything I'm doing might warm up to the idea and it fits them perfectly. It may be the very things that they've wrestled with and then now they figured out that that thing that was a hindrance, the, the thing that was the problem, the rock in their shoe, if you will, They once they remove it, then they can walk, you know, without a limp. They can get right to where they're going with no, no reason to feel like you're being in, impeded and, and slowed down. They won't have that fear of holding on to a trade. They won't have a fear of um, being stopped out because they know what they're looking for is going to repeat over and over and over again. And it's one thing to have a, a model that you think is good when you first start finding profitability. That might be a profitable model, but what tends to happen is you try to demand more than what the model can provide. And that's the reason why I have to have, for me, I have to have different setups. I'm not comfortable accepting a one trick, one pony type thing. You know, I, I can't, I, I, my mind won't let that happen especially knowing what I know about price and how it delivers, I know there's a plethora of things that I can utilize to get into other setups. And I try to showcase that. And unfortunately, what that has done is created an insatiable desire for everyone else to do all those things too. And you're equating that is the only way of determining success with me. Or you're not a real ICT student unless you can do everything that I've ever taught about. And that's not true. All you need to be able to do is find one setup and I've done my best and I, I don't know how to do it any better than stripping it down to simply five handles. And I talked about in a Twitter space last week, how that might not be. It sounds like someone just got shot, to be honest with you. Hang on one second. I'm in my Highlander. Down in Bel Air, but it just sounded like somebody just shot off three shots. There you go, <laughs> live and on the scene. Here's ICT reporting. I don't see nothing. As long as they ain't shooting me, I'm good. I didn't see nothing. So you might go after those five handles. And like I'm teaching my son, Cameron, and what I've mentioned also in the Twitter space is that what happens if you're trying to start off as a five-handle trader and you're going to find that that can be found a lot intraday, lots of opportunities of that occurring. And you can be bias neutral, meaning you don't have to have the bias correct. So for the folks that are struggling with bias right now, 
I'm giving you a way to study and look for setups. And it's such a small range of movement and price. Five handles is nothing. Like it's literally nothing. But for you, it may not have probably seemed like worth it at all. Because you hear other people saying, ha, five handles, you got a little dick. Yeah, no. Five handles can change your entire life if you know how to find them consistently. High frequency algorithms are taking many times huge numbers of trades just to get less than one handle move. So who's fucking laughing? Okay. The clowns that have an ego problem and have a superiority complex and they have a small audience. That's the ones that are bitching and, and making up bullshit. So you shouldn't listen to those people anyway. But what happens if you're aiming for those five handles, but you don't have the confidence yet because you're new and that's understandable, but you take it off when you get three handles and you do that for months until you find that level of comfort doing it. Because some of it is going to be requiring you to do things longer than you think it's going to take right now. And when I just said that, what? Several months. And some of the trolls are snickering and laughing. <laughs> he said, do three handles for months because this is hard for some people. It's scary. Like you had, I had to overcome a lot just to get into trades in 1992. Like it was scary after my first trade, which I impulsively just jumped in because I had to just do something. I felt like I had to do it. And if I could be honest for a second, it was much like when maybe this doesn't make sense. I think I've talked about this before. <laughs> my son Caleb said that uh, he understands this perfectly but it might be a byproduct of us having the same DNA too but y have you ever drove your car and I promise we'll come back to the three handle and five handle I promise we're going to go right back to that but when we have episodes where we're driving okay just say I've experienced that or if you never experienced it but you think it's fucking weird and funny respond on Twitter too that way I know everybody's awake still. But you ever drive your car on a bridge and start questioning yourself, what happens if I just jerk the wheel to the right really hard and just go off of it? <laughs> like, and do you ever feel that and begin to fear your body just doing it out of just like it's going to do it and you had no say in it? And fearing that your arm's just going to do it like a like a knee jerk reaction, like a, a like a ref, like a reflex. It sounds crazy to some people, but I promise you, in this audience, I guarantee you, some of you have experienced that, and you're thinking, "Man, I hope I don't drive off this bridge." You don't do it, but sometimes you start questioning, like, "What happens if that happened?" That would be embarrassing. No, you're going to fucking prison. <laughs> Not prison, but you're, you're going to the grave. And if you turn into a crowd of people or, you know, do something like that into another car, you know, you're going to injure somebody, and then you're going to go to jail, right? Or die in the process. That moment when I got into my first trade in 1992, and I did that orange juice option, it was almost like that same feeling. Like it felt like it was an overwhelming, I have to do something and almost like I didn't have any control over it. Like I literally was pushed subconsciously to make a dumb decision. And I know looking backwards at that moment, how it was one of the most reckless and just careless decisions I've ever done with money. And obviously the outcome showed me that that was careless. You know, I lost 50% of what I put up in the option, which was a lot of money to me back then. And I just closed the account immediately after that. I said, okay, you know, send me my money. I wasn't ready. I was scared that I was going to do something like that again and lose the, less, the rest of it, right? So you might have those impulses where you're fearful of what you might do to yourself in trading, which is what I had. And I had to be conditioned to go in looking at the market from a different approach than just one entry technique. It feels too, in my opinion, because I wrestle with all this bullshit and obsessive compulsive disorder, it feels too myopic for me to know 
only one way of getting into a marketplace. In my opinion of, of a highly efficient trader, they should have more than one way to get in. And I felt if I didn't have that, I was not properly equipped to trade. So I wanted to have a repertoire of things because in my mindset was I'll have a tool for whatever the fuck they bring to me. Whatever that market's going to do today, I will have a trade. Now, I can do that today, but admittedly, that was a dumb decision, which caused me to make a lot of tweaks and mess with stuff and blow accounts trying to make things happen when I didn't have any proof behind what it was I was trying to force as a trader when I first started. And for some, if you listen to me as a benchmark of five handles, you're starting from ground zero. So five handles is a, a huge win. If you just get that one time a week and you stop and you don't lose it, that's a good thing. That's good. Especially if you're doing it with a mini, one mini contract. You're doing 1250 bucks a week. Well, that's not entirely true, is it? If you're doing it multiple times each week, you can build it up to that. It's 25 handles. But if you do it every single day, do that, you're going to get it that way. But if you just, right now, for instance, the folks that are in Africa, you are challenged financially right now. And in Nigeria, there's a whole lot of shit going on. If you made $250 a week, just a week, that's life-changing over there. And some of you have done the math on that, thinking, man, I'm going to live a whole different lifestyle once this starts happening for me. But in the United States here, unfortunately, and this is not to you talk down to anybody else in another country, but $250 doesn't even pay my fucking cable bill per month. So here we have a lot of expenses and we live lives that are really bloated with things that are just overpriced. And I'm not exempt to that. But these five handles can make a major dent even with what I spend a month. I told you, you know, 1500 1300 $1,200 of groceries. And I have... Not my full family, my, my three older children, they have their own places. They, they're outside my house. And I still have to pay a lot of money. In my, in my opinion, that's a lot of money for groceries. So I know that all of you that aren't making a lot of money right now, and you're making whatever your job pays, and you have your families, you have your bills, your ends of the meat, and you have all this stuff going on around us that's causing shit to get really expensive, like really expensive. The car I just bought my son, Cameron, Nissan Sentra, $28,000. That car should never sell for $28,000. They wanted twenty nine eight. That was the lowest they were going to go. And I said, I will never buy another car from this lot again unless I get it for $28,000. So naturally, they sold it for $28,000. <clears> so I know it's hard for everybody else because it, it, it irks me to see what they're making people pay for now and going to the grocery store and seeing how much shit costs. It's nuts. So now bring that into the equation. Trolls and folks that are trying to learn how to do this, they've never done it before. You have to have a, a, a goal to reach. That's realistic, that it's rewarding if you hit it. And now I give you what? You aim for the five, but to give yourself confidence, as soon as you get three, close it and watch and see how many times it goes to the five. That's what I had to do to, to build my confidence to get into trades. I conditioned myself that way. Cameron's in the process of going through that. He's going to go through that same process of you're looking for five. As soon as you get three, you're going to close it and then watch it. Does it deliver the five? How long does it take? How much drawdown? that you experience from the point at where you took off the three contracts, I'm sorry, the three handles in that one contract move, how much time did it take in drawdown before it went to the five or did it ever go there? Those things you keep a running log of and you're gonna be doing these multiple times intraday, which is why I'm telling you to get your $10,000 demo trade or demo account ready because I want you to be doing one mini, yes, with a $10,000 account, because I want you to see the effects of rushing in under 
funded. But I'm going to show you how to correct the drawdown too. You're all going to create the drawdown because you're going to be doing things through ignorance. But I will teach you how to fix all that stuff and also how to fear getting in. I'm going to do the whole thing I did with myself and what I'm putting my sons through. You'll be able to accomplish beating that anxiety that, you know, performance anxiety is what it is. I'm afraid I'm going to do it wrong. I'm afraid it won't be like your trades are. I'm going to show you how to get past all that stuff. But for someone that's new, and I give them this model to start with, it's a looking glass. And it allows them to focus on what? Look for five, be content with three. And by conditioning themselves over and over again, intraday, using one minute charts, it gives them several opportunities per day to, to challenge themselves to have that experience. It's like a laboratory experiment. And you're going to be prompted to do that. And it's going to be viewed by the trolls as, oh, look at this. This is dumb. No. It's to help you become indifferent to the outcome, which is exactly what you need as a trader. When you put a trade on, you know that this is what your model says it should do. You also know that it's usually more times than not correct. So if it's more times correct than it's not, if it fails, it's not going to cause you to wig out. You're not going to say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to have to jump on something else. This doesn't work anymore. You'll trust that this is a speed bump. That's all it is. It's not a roadblock. It's not a barrier. It's just something that didn't give you what you were wanting that time. Just like getting turned down on a Saturday night at the club. She's good looking, ain't she? Yes, yeah, she is. You finally had the courage to go up there. And you went long on one contract trying to get five, and you didn't get nothing. You got stopped out. <laughs> As you said, I'm not interested. Sometimes the market's going to do that. Ladies, you're not exempt either. Sometimes it's just no. I hope he asks me out and then you see his wife sit down next to him. Sometimes you're going to get full margin too. So by conditioning yourself, looking for something that's realistic and practical, five handles as a beginning, I think is, is, is reasonable. It's easy in my opinion, but it's also powerful because if you can develop the confidence to see this repeating, you're going to see a whole lot of fucking setups. A lot. And you're not going to be fearful of missing anything. Why? How can you get to the point of ICT never fearing missing a move? Because I see them fucking coming at all angles all the time. It's it, There's a lot of them. The point is, is you have to find the ones that you like. I literally walked through on Thursday with the GDP number with my son. I said, look, here's something that can happen here. This is what's going to happen here. It, it was doing exactly what I said I was going to do. But I said, but I want to see the trade that goes up to the fair value gap. That's my trade. That's the one I want to do. But even though I'm calling it live right there in front of everyone that was listening to us, that's what it's like to be you know, well-versed in this. You can see lots of five-handle runs up and down. And you're never going to be fearful, which means what? You're not going to be impulsive about getting any losing trade right away back. Just because I can see lots of trades and I can see them coming and I can I can engage on all of them. My my experience has been when I've done that. I lose sight of where I am. And when the bigger moves come, because I, I, it's like a game after that. Like, I, I, I'm like, okay, I did this one, I did that one, I did this one, I did that one, and I forgot, oh, I'm supposed to be looking for this. And it, it's, you know, my obsessive compulsive just takes the better of me, and I, I don't do well in that situation. So, which is why I did what with my trading? I have to be highly selective. I want to be in the moves that have the best potential for the big runaway runs. I know how to find them, but if I either missed them because it happened before I got through the charts or it happened when I was sleeping. That's a move I can't, I can't participate in. And you can't either. I'm not getting up and saying, Oh no, Bitcoin just moved 10,000 points over the last six you know, weeks or whatever. 
I, I don't give a shit. That's not my market. I don't wake up and look at the S and P and say, "Oh shit, it moved twenty handles overnight." I wish I could. No, I can find twenty handles in a day doing five handle runs up, down, up, down. Oh, here's my here's my twenty handles. I'm not worried about it, and you won't be worried about it. Which is where you should be as a trader. You need to know what you're looking for, what you're going to accept as a, a trade that incurs risk, and be comfortable with that. And if it fails, you're not going to lose your mind about it. You're not going to be in a hurry to try to find something that really isn't in the chart. What you're trying to do is impose your will. You're looking through that looking glass in a losing position. You're in drawdown. You're going to manifest your next setup, even when it's not there. Why? Because you don't have a clue what you're doing. You don't know your model because if you knew your model, you would sit still until it formed. Maybe you watch live streamers. Some of them don't live stream anymore because they wreck themselves. The ones that do it, if they're impulsive, if they go in and try to overcome and do more than they're supposed to, study them. If you know somebody that's like that, Tell me who they are in, in, in a tweet to me. That way I can watch them and see, you know, I wanna I wanna I don't want to go there and troll, and I'm asking none of you to go there and troll. But if it's someone that you see that is impulsive, you know, that's a wonderful social experiment to study and observe them, not to bring hate on them, not to make them feel bad. That's not what this is. But if they're willing to put themselves out there like a fish in an aquarium for everybody to look at. That's a perfect experiment for you to see what not to do and watch them feel the anguish and, and struggle trying to do something, expecting some specific outcome that's never going to come because they're just reacting to price versus predicting price. I saw, I saw um, a tweet by a guy. I'm not going to name him. <laughs> we, we, we talked once, not directly, but you know, through online posts and such. And he posted something to the effect that your job is not to predict the market, but to react to price. Okay. So that's some grade A bullshit right there. And that's the reason why your results look like the way they do. And sir, you know who I'm talking about. It's you. And I'm not going to try to say anything more than that. But you have to predict the price. You have to. That's what every winning trader is trying to do. So how the fuck can you say your job is not to predict price? That's exactly what the fuck we're doing. That's like telling the football teams your job is not to go get touchdowns. What the fuck are we here for? I'm here to predict the future. We're here to predict the fucking future. You can't. Think about what the fuck you're doing. You're trading futures for fuck's sake. It's in the name. That's what you're doing. That's what the fuck we're doing. We're predicting the future. And when I see these people say your job as a trader is not to predict the future price movements. It's to be ready to react to price. How the fuck is that sound logic? That doesn't make any bit of fucking sense. That makes no sense at all. What the fuck? That makes no sense. And that's not the only person that said it. It's regurgitated and it's posted all the time and shit from people that know don't know what the fuck they're doing how can you spend seriously folks <laughs> holy shit how long did it how long did it take for you to see me calling these things before the fact to know that you know what this ain't random anymore and once you get to that point okay once you get to that point where you know it's not random and this shit is controlled does it make any bit of fucking sense to listen to somebody tell you or the world tossing out an opinion into the abyss of the internet say your job as a trader is not to predict price. It's to be ready to react to it. How can anybody that has spent any considerable time with me proving what it is that I teach and show you what the real market is, how can anyone palette that? How can you accept that or even entertain it as a reasonable fucking consideration for what we do? 
Nobody fucking can do that. Nobody absolutely would accept that. Let me explain why that is perpetuated in this industry. This thought process is a very soothing excuse for why they suck. And there's no nice way of saying it. It's for people that don't know how to predict price. And it's a wonderful excuse for them to be able to lean on, cozy up to, and say, well, it's impossible to do anyway. So therefore, I shouldn't feel bad about it. You bought the hook, line, and sinker that is in books. You can't predict price. No one can time the market. Well, I should change my motherfucking name to no one because I'm proving it every fucking day. And guess who else is doing it? My fucking students. You're seeing them taking trades that I didn't even talk about. But they're using the logic that I've taught. So guess what that means? All the other bullshit is horse shit. Grade A. So yes, our job is absolutely predicting price. But in the beginning, you don't know how to do that. So how do you protect yourself from it? You go in with baby steps. Gradually teaching yourself to trust your ability to do it. Also, condition yourself. Build in coping mechanisms for bad character flaws. Impatience, impulsiveness, gambling. All those things that you don't think you have right now until you start pushing a button. And then you're going to discover you're a fucking train wreck. You thought you had everything together. If you ever see those guys that go around on YouTube, my wife shows me this stuff all the time. I, I don't entertain it myself, but she, she's a TikToker girl, right? She, she's, I mean, she, she fucking eats this shit up all day long. And I, I'm like, do you feel your IQ drop in watching this shit? Like I, I, when you share some of this stuff, I literally feel like you fucking stole time from me. Like, what do you see in entertainment value in that? It's dumb. But she shares this stuff with me sometimes. She'll say, look at this guy here. And they'll ask people, you know, how many states are in the United States? And some of the answers are shocking. And it's like, what the hell? That's nuts. And there's another one. So they'll ask, he'll say, hey, look. Um, oh, shit. I lost my train of thought. Some of you probably already know where I'm going to go with this, but I lost my train of thought with it. Damn it. It'll come back to me. Give me a second. Let me get a, let me get a drink here. Let me think. It's, it's spring weather, by the way. I don't fucking drink alcohol. It's these goobers that think I'm drunk all the time. <laughs> I, I, I am just off the rails sometimes, yes, but I'm not inebriated. I don't drink and I don't take drugs. So the, uh, oh man, this guy, what does he do? He goes around and he asks people some shit. I don't know. I, I, I may not be able to come back. If I, if I remember it, I'll tweet about it. I might even share a, a link to one of the videos. But, uh, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, thank you. He'll go up to a, a guy and say, hey, look at this woman here. What would you rate her? Ten being extremely beautiful and one being a grenade. What would you, what would you say? And they'll say, oh, well, you know. I think she's a six. And and sometimes these women are, are drop dead gorgeous, like beautiful. And they come off with some stupid shit. Like, oh yeah, she's like a six, maybe six and a half. And then he says, okay, what would you rate yourself? Oh shit, I'm a nine. And they literally look like a buster. Like they, they don't look like they even have a fucking job. <laughs> they, it's an, it's a mess. So they end up taking that guy's picture and sharing it to another person saying, what do you think about this person? And they're like, this guy's a bum, basically. He, he shouldn't be asking anybody out, right? And it's interesting to see what your perception is about yourself, especially if you're opinionated about other people. And it, it's very much like a fucking Vinny, where you're a little dick guy that runs around and think you're a savage and you can't do shit. And your opinion of yourself is gigantic, right? So you know he ain't packing shit downstairs. He don't have a giant piano, <laughs> and that's what's like when you see these characters in industry. Like they they go around with their ego. They go around saying how you should do things, but they bring nothing to the table showing what they can do at all. But failure, not doing well, and they spread bad advice. Bad advice. 
they don't have students that are killing it. They don't have profitable students. They don't have people proving it. Nobody's interviewing their students. Nobody's seeing anybody getting six-figure withdrawals in accounts and companies that are literally interviewing them. So when you listen to other people talk shit about you, our community, and me, and what it is I'm teaching, and if you entertain that, if it gives you any negative feelings, you're not paying attention because there's no reason for you to be even entertaining that bullshit. There's so much proof in here, you're drowning in it. It's intoxicating. It is a fucking cult of winning. But in the beginning, you can't appreciate that because what are you doing? You're having that same complex that this gentleman highlights when he goes around asking other people. What do you think about this person here? What he's targeting is the ability for the human mind to look for the negative in any fucking thing. Toxic thinking in weak-minded individuals or ill-prepared people as traitors and everybody when they first start are all ill-prepared. But you don't know the level of toxicity in you until you start doing this. If you see somebody doing well and you feel like you, oh, I got to start talking shit about this person. Well, you're a little Dick Benny then. But if you look at other people and they're doing well and you don't feel like there's an issue, there's a problem, and you're like, wow, that person's really doing well. And even though you can't do what they're doing, you can't even do anything close to that. You can appreciate what they're doing and think, you know, wow, that might be motivational for me to do that. Even though I can't do it, I don't feel like it's defeating for me to feel that way. Why? Because you're new. You're new at it. And so many, especially the young men, so many of the young men that come in this industry that follow other influencers that make it about image. Everything's got to be the new car, the nice cars. The, the, I'm telling you, having had lots of shit like that, it doesn't make you a better trader. And frankly, nobody gives a fuck once you show it. Once you show it, that's it. You done shot your wad. It's done. What are you going to do? Be seen in it again with a different haircut? They've already seen. Okay, so what? You got a car. Big deal. What have you been doing in your trades? Show me your live account trading. Show me over a chart while it's ticking real time when I'm watching it. Show me what the market's going to do. Tell me what it's going to do. And unfortunately, that's the stuff that never fucking happens. And that's where I live. That's my fast lane. I'm taking you in there doing that. But I also know as your mentor that you're going to have problems in the beginning. You're going to discover things about yourself that you are not going to like. And you're going to impulsively, because you're not disciplined, you're not going to have the impulse of, of a professional where it is, okay, I'm in a, a market environment right now that is not conducive for high probability. So I'm going to impulsively remove myself because my training tells me to do so. Not run away in fear or not roll the dice and see what happens, which is predominantly what everybody does. That's the demo disease, okay? Push the button, see what happens. Push the button, see what happens. In the beginning, you're going to be a train wreck when you discover what you have as character flaws. Nobody has ever started this industry, ever, ever. Never happened. It's never, ever happened. It's never happened. Where somebody walked out here, got it all right from day one, and never had hardships or had to wrestle with internal conflicts with what they are as a trader, what they're not as a trader. They don't, they don't have a person out there in the industry that's like that. Everybody comes in here and they're all, we are all baptized in the fire. And that is going to be pain. It's going to be loss. It's going to be frustration. And guess what, folks? Listen, friends and neighbors, that is absolutely part of this. And that's why I never make any sugarcoating about it. I want you to know that's coming. Because that way you're prepared to, number one, identify it when it does. And then you have to do certain things to wrestle it and subdue it because it will undo you. I don't go out there and say, go out there and try to go for 10 handles a day. That's unrealistic. I tell you to look for one five handle move. That's what you're looking for. In hindsight, 
By doing that every single day, you're conditioning your eye to see it. It's the same thing that happens when you go out and buy a car. Oh, I got this car. It's such a pretty blue color. Nobody's ever got a car that's this color in my neighborhood. And all of a sudden, as soon as you buy it and you drive home, on your way home, you done seen 17 of the same fucking car. It's like everybody went out there that day and bought your fucking car. How did that happen? How the fuck did that just happen? It didn't just happen. What you just did was you opened up and activated your reticular activating system. So now your subconscious that was filtering all that stuff out before, because it didn't matter that that car was owned by other people, you went to the lot, you saw it. Oh, I got to have that car. It means something to you now. It resonates with you. It's something that is part of you. So it should come to no surprise when every time you walk around, you see your car because it means something. You have adopted that as something meaningful to you. Well, when I tell you to look at hindsight and back test and study old data, looking for shit, and I tell you to pause the video, look, look through price and tell me what you see. Well, not that I tell you to tell me what you see, but annotate what you see in your log, in your journal. When you do that, what you're doing is you're activating your reticular, reticular activating system. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're inviting your subconscious to draw on to something that is meaningful to you. What is that? I'm teaching you fair value gaps because it's the most visually identifiable thing in price action, apart from relative equal highs and relative equal lows. So in, in short, really, you could just trade with just that. They're the, two, they're the two most important, visually pleasing, easy to find. Jump on a chart real quick. Any time frame, your eye will go right to the relative equal highs, relative equal lows. And if there's a fair value gap in the, in the middle of it, and then you know there's likely to go up there, well, you can buy the fair value gap and ride it up to the relative equal highs. There's your model right there. It's done. I just gave it to you, and it cost you nothing. Probably some of you never even thought about it. You're like, now, oh, man, I never thought about it like that. Yes, it's just like that. But when you don't go through old data and you just binge watch my videos and you're not pouring yourself in charts, spending time literally every single day looking through charts, studying how these other moves that you can't make money or lose money in, everybody else is going to tell you it's a waste of fucking time. They're the same people that will not be trading with live funds six months later. There's a lot of bad advice in this industry. A lot of bad actors, a lot of just a lot of chapped asses, man. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's harder for some of you. I'm sorry. But it wasn't easy for me in the beginning. I've just been doing a whole lot longer. I know what works. And I'm telling you, if you listen to the shit I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I'm telling you to avoid, you will save yourself a whole lot of time. And be accepting. Be flexible. Give yourself permission to take up to this year and maybe into next year to get it for some of you. If you give yourself a broad timeline with no definitive, I got to know it by this time. You know, I, in a lot of ways, I regret having told you that my last live stream is going to be the second Friday of November because it kind of pushed the envelope on pressure. Like now you have to, by this date, I gave you a deadline. When I teach you, don't have a deadline. I didn't tell you that so that way you can be fearful of it. I've told you that so that way when I get to that point and I say I'm stopping, I can say, remember I told you because <laughs> that's just the way it is. I, I got to have a I have to have exit clause here. OK, when when I'm going to leave, why I'm leaving and why it stopped. It wasn't because somebody ran me off the fucking Internet. It wasn't because, you know. I'm locked up. It wasn't because I'm, you know, in the poor house. It's because Michael's going back to fucking doing what the book Michael does, okay, which is be Michael. And I've spent a lot of time, if I do this every week, every day, I'm investing a lot of time in all of you. And it's your job to do all the work in between, which is a lot. It is. And I saw a guy saying, uh, listen, man, I love what you do, but listen, you know, you're doing these Twitter spaces and you only give like 30 minutes of applicable uh, information and we got to sift through all that stuff. Listen, kindly, sir, please. Um, 
don't send me shit like that because that's the kind of stuff I block. Because you basically you're saying my time investing into you, telling you all these things, you can't be successful if you just know the concepts of getting in, where to put a stop loss, all that other stuff. Because if it was just that easy, I can do that in a book and you won't make money with it. I can do that in a video because I've already done it and you're not making money yet because that's not all that is required. You have to understand the person that's in you that's going to absolutely fuck this up for you. I'm sorry, but that's the reality. We're, we're not always going to be prepared for doing difficult things. And this is one of the most difficult things on this fucking planet. You're wrestling with yourself in an industry that's designed to take your ass the fuck out. You're not supposed to make money here, man. You're not. It was not created for everybody to walk in here and just know what's going on and make money. It was designed for, well, P.T. Barnum said it perfectly. The sucker. There's suckers born every day. And they come in here looking for animal patterns and bullshit Mickey Mouse things that tells them it's going to go up because moving averages are crossed over. And they lose their ass. And they get mad. They think, okay, I didn't do it right at that time. And they push and push and push. And they lose their ass again. Not realizing that the market doesn't respect any of that bullshit. And if they have a strong opinion of you about how they won't ever submit to somebody else's stuff when the other stuff is absolutely what's going on. They become absolutely toxic to themselves and anybody else that listens or looks at them. And Vinnies have happened all the time. I've had Vinnies on America Online. Okay. I've had those kind of creepy bitches. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just, they're weak people. Weak. And you're going to have them too. If you go out there on social media, you make yourself known, you're going to do something and you're going to be consistent doing this. And you're going to rub all kinds of people wrong because they can't do it. And little dick complexes are going to materialize in men. Rarely will you ever see a woman come out there and, and start talking shit unless it was talking options lady. And she got real quiet when I said, let's go in. The, <laughs> let's, start, let's start showing some daily. Let's look at the, uh, the statements. Let's do it. Let's call it live. And, all that. and she just dropped off the face of Europe. Men are the ones that do it because it's ego. It's pride. It's the caveman mentality. And when you're young. You all, the younger men, you all want to do that because you think that's what this is about. And what you're trying to turn trading into is image-based. Image-based. Worship me. Give me attention because you need to feel what? Like I have always wanted to feel. I wanted to have affirmations given to me from my grandfather. I can't get that. So I pursue things to try to give me that high that I'd never got. From hearing it from my grandfather. I wanted that man's approval. And I can't get it. So I do everything in life. Trying to constantly. Seek. The affirmations that. What I'm doing is above grade of everything. And anybody that spends time with me. Really rolls their sleeves up. That's the common denominator response is. This is next level shit. And I know that. I know that. And when I see you succeed. And when I see you succeed. And I see others that are among you in this community succeeding it's thrilling to me it's it's very satisfying like i love that you're finding yourself in this i love it and while you're doing it and you second guess yourself it's like watching my children learn how to walk and some of you are older than me but it has that same effect like i am emotionally committed to you I am 100% committed to you. I've given you my entire year. Every single day, I'm giving you myself. Motherfucker, you better keep driving. <laughs> Fucking guy rolled up next to me. You better get your ass beat, motherfucker. So, I'm pouring myself into and See how it ruined that moment? I was like, we, had, we had a really nice moment there. That's where I would have been editing it out. <laughs> I wouldn't be recording videos, obviously, in my vehicle. But uh, I'm giving you something that no other mentor would. 
Number one, I'm doing it for free. And I love the fact that it's for free because nobody's going to be able to talk shit about it. Two, I already know I'm going to make monsters this year. Like I'm going to make ridiculous money-making motherfuckers. And I can't wait. I can't wait. But I don't want you to fuck it up. I don't want you, you, the person that doesn't know quite well how well you can fuck it up for yourself. So you have to listen to these conversations. It's meant for you to avoid the things that I and other people fucked up doing. You're going to fail doing things that you don't see coming. It's going to come out of left field. Oh, man, I I didn't realize I was going to do that. I was so dumb. Right. Right. And I'm telling you all those pitfalls, those snap, those those snares that's going to snap over, you know, and take you by surprise. You're not going to realize it until it's too late. Without knowing beforehand, which is why I'm talking to you in these lectures like this, when I give you the things to think about going into it, be aware that this is what typically will happen. Some people feel these things, these flaws will manifest themselves. In men, it's usually all image-based, olympic size feats. Big money only is the, the thing that works best. Big p No, steady p Not wicked drawdown in max loss days. That's what you want to avoid that. But you get that if you're trying to always swing for grand slam home runs. And if you don't know how to fucking trade well and you don't know sniper precision, you can't reasonably expect to do grand slam home runs day in and day out and let the market just hand you windfall victories like that. It doesn't make sense. And to hear people teach that, that that's a practical or try to showcase that as this is why you should be mentored by me. That's stupidity. That's ass backwards. You need to go in respecting risk, identifying risk, not just mentioning it in passing, but let me demonstrate what you should be doing and then failing in doing it or never showing it at all. Like with the majority of these people out there try to promote the idea that they're consistently profitable, they're, they're precision oriented, but they won't show you they know how to do that, which for me is very frustrating because it sounds like there's a whole lot of me out there. But I can't see it. And I want to, I, I love it. I don't care who you are. If you can do it well, I'd love to watch it. And I don't go on these other streamers and talk shit to them. I'm very supportive. And if you start live streaming, I can't wait. I would love to be in your audience too. I'm cheerleading you on too. I love this industry. I love when people have the courage to go out there and do it in front of other people. And if they can do it well, wow. I'm not a sports fan, you know what I mean? Like I watched the Super Bowl, just the the last one here. And I'm not sure if it's like that all the time, but the last Super Bowl I heard there was like a whole lot of shit that people didn't like. And I thought it was kind of like, well, what I expected, boring and wasn't all that. But it was a good game between them. But I'm not a sports fan. But with trading, like I'd watch anybody trade. To me, it's fascinating. It's well, like it's not to me. It's to me. It's not like golf. Golf makes no fucking sense. Why anybody would play that is beyond me. But people watch that shit, and they stand around and follow this guy walking around hitting this ball in this fucking hole. Which to me, I'm sure it takes a great deal of skill, but I got better shit to do. I ain't gonna be doing that. I can see how people can appreciate watching football having watched the full game for the first time in my life in the past Super Bowl just happened. It was entertaining going back and forth. I was like, wow, this is kind of like watching a chess game between really good players. Well, you just did this. Well, I'll do that. You did that. Well, I'll do this. It was good. I, I, am I going to be a football fan now? Fuck no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not watching that shit. But with trading, I could watch that with anybody because why? It means something to me. Just like when I tell you as a new student to go through old price data, look at those moves, study it. What do you see that pops off the chart to you with what I'm teaching you? You may not know how to see it live. You may not be able to call it live, engage it in trade. And that's that's what's happening right now for a lot of you. You're watching me teach on something. We've been going for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, if you consider the beginning of the year in January. And you're complaining in your tweets that, 
oh, I missed this setup. I was going to push the button and trade. First of all, you're you're wrecking yourself right there because you were told not to trade. You can't learn this trading. You have to learn this when there's no money, not even a demo. You're reading price. You're getting to the point where you're having that same experience where anytime you look at the chart, it's like seeing that car you just bought. Your eye goes right to it. You can't. It's not like you're looking around for your car that you just bought. Your eye just jumps to it. Why? Because you've conditioned yourself to look for it. You have identified that as a pattern. It's a point of interest that is meaningful to you because you keep looking at old moves. And because you've done that, you've conditioned yourself like a weight trainer. You keep, wor you keep working your arms with heavy weights and you're eating well. It's going to grow a larger muscle. Well, your attention to detail and the details are what I'm teaching you. These elements, these PD arrays. It doesn't matter which one I love. It doesn't matter which one I'm using today, next week, going forward for the rest of the year. It only matters which one that you like. Which one makes the most sense to you? The first one that you can see easily in the chart, and it might not be the fair value guy. It, it, to me, it, it's the easiest one to see in spot, but it might not be for you. You might see a breaker. It just makes perfect sense to you. And guess what that means? You're going to trade breakers. It doesn't mean it's inferior or superior to any other one. There's so many times traders will ask me, you know, what's your favorite setup? The one I'm getting in, I have lots of them. The one I know I'm going to fucking get the outcome I'm looking for right now. That's the one I like the most. Next, The next trade I'm in, <laughs> that's the one I love the most. I have lots of them. And I try not to build the case for this is my favorite setups because as soon as I say that, the celebrity complex that comes over people when I'm just an average guy, dude, I'm, not, I'm I, there's nothing, literally nothing celebrity about me. It's, I just know this stuff. And when you ask me what my favorite is, I know why you're doing that. It's the same reason why I was wishing I could reach out to Larry Williams and say, which one of these trades would you like doing the most? I just asked it of uh, Linda Rash on Twitter. I'm not even sure she even responded to me, to be honest with you. Uh, if she did, I didn't see it, but I got to go check my tweets and see if she responded. I know some guy did. He probably said, here's, Here's a video where she talked about this or that. I was kind of actually hoping that she would respond, but if she didn't, well, whatever. But uh, I asked her specifically, I said, you know, if you had to only trade one setup and you could only trade one setup the rest of the fucking time you're on this planet, what would it be and why? And I'm not sure if I asked for what market, but uh, that was a question I wanted to ask Larry Williams. Like if you had to only pick one setup, that was your go-to. You couldn't do anything else. <laughs> you know, me, if you were to ask me that right now, I can tell you what that is. And know that what I'm about to say, for some of you, ain't going to make any bit of fucking sense. You're like, oh, how does that? And you're going to see people tweeting. Can someone send me the video where ICT talks about <laughs> it's going to happen? Don't think that this is the best thing for you. It's not. Not all of you, it isn't. But for me, if I had to only trade one setup and I had to wait for it and it had to be there in the chart or I did nothing, I would be trading the second stage distribution in my market maker sell model or my second stage accumulation in my market maker buy model. And that literally is taught in the core concepts. Like it, it's, it's there. I'm not going to say exactly that. But it's the second stage distribution of either reaccumulation for longs or redistribution for shorts. So I'm looking for a market that's really designed to go lower. Everything's in my favor. And it's a clear market maker pattern where it's going to go lower, it's going to go higher. And those moves are the quick, sudden runs real quick. It's always going to be a low resistance liquidity run, which is why I'm saying that would be my, you know, Jug of choice, if I'm going to be saying it like that, I'm going to get my high off of that one. And it happens every single week. And it sets up as a one shot, one kill. So it would allow me to do whatever I want to do with it. If I want to scalp it and get little pieces of it, or if I want to run the whole thing and get a whole month's worth of income, it can come from that one setup. So it it can give me whatever I want from it.
It could be the one setup for the week. It could be the one setup for the whole month. It could be a, a training exercise for me to hone my skills on the 15 second chart and just pyramid the fuck out of it you know, while it's running. That that's that's my that's my unicorn. That's my setup. That's the thing that if I had to only do one thing, it's that. But clearly, you can see I have other things I can do. And what does that mean? I can do whatever the market's providing me an opportunity. And right now, one market might be choppy. If it's if it's choppy, what does that mean? You know, I got to do something else outside that one. Now, can I trade five handles in a choppy S and P market? Yes. But what happens if that choppiness is in dollar and you're a Forex trader? Your mind should jump right to the crosses that are non-dollar because they're going to go crazy. Whenever the dollar is consolidating, look at Tuesday. And Tuesday, we had what? Really big runs with weak currencies against the strong currencies that were not having the dollar in the, in the pair name. And they had really wide runs and several handles, or I'm sorry, several hundred uh, pips. And some of them moving a lot this week based on that consolidation in dollar. So that's the reason why it's important for you to understand that there are many ways to take setups out of the marketplace, but you also have to have a macro understanding of what causes these markets to have the disparity between them. Because you need to have the disparity to have what? Movement. And without movement, we can't profit unless you're writing options. <laughs> and we're not doing that here. So we need movement. As a intraday speculator, as a short-term trader, we have to have movement. So I'm teaching you to, number one, identify where that movement is going to be in the greatest probability. Is it going up or down? And then waiting time of day. What time of day should it do that? Well, that's the times I tell you to follow the marketplace. What happens on the day of the week that it's most likely to provide that? You're looking for higher, in, higher medium impact news events because that's where it's going to be highly manipulated. We're waiting for those opportunities where the market just wonderfully invites the retail trader to step into a snare. That's why we're waiting for those high impact or medium impact news driver days. Not FOMC, not CPI, but anything else. Not not from payroll either, but any other event, medium or high impact, we love those days. We love those days because we know the retail trader is about to get sacrificed on the altar of trading. And you can have a moral dilemma with that if you want. I don't have a moral dilemma because I paid my dues. <laughs> Everybody is a card carrying loser when they come in this industry. That's just the way it is. And the smart ones learn how to lose professionally. The rest of their life, they manage losing. That's what consistently profitable trading is. Every profitable student, every profitable trader, every profitable speculator is a professional loser. They know when to take their losses because their winners are going to run. They're going to let them do that. The people that don't survive in this industry are the ones that are trying to be professional winners. And it's the only thing they expect. And by default, they lose and they end it for themselves. They really lose. They, they lose their account. They lose the ability to trade and speculate because they lose their mind. At some point, you might have a lot of money. You might have a lot of money. Say, so, you know what? If I blow a couple of accounts, it's okay. If I blow these funded accounts, all I got to do is reset. Okay. For some of you, there's going to be a time where you've done it too many times now and you know it's, just, it's a waste. You want it so bad, but you can't do it. And you won't spend any more money on it. You just won't. And they sometimes are the people that are begging people, buy me a funded account. I know there's people out there that can't afford it. But there are some that just can't bring it to themselves to pay for one more. Because they know what they're going to do with it. And they're going like a drug addict. Come on, man. Come on, man. Give me another bump. Come on, man. Give me some spare change. I need to get on the bus. What you're doing is you're trying to get some scratch so you can get another dose of heroin. You're an addict. The wrong kind of addict. Around here, Look at that fox. Wow. No, that's not a woman I'm talking about either. I'm talking about a four-legged <laughs> animal. Wow. That's pretty. I mean, that put me out of what I was saying. But anyway, it's 20 minutes after 10. I've been going for almost two and a half hours. Ah, fuck it. Let's end it at 10.30 and make it round it off. We've got 11 more minutes, right?
So I'm hoping that uh, in all this rambling tonight, I'm, I'm reaching some of you because the things I put you through and studying and observing things, I know what you want. You want me to tell you the trades that are moving and get you into it so you can make money because you think that's what you need. And I want you to be able to do this when I'm not here. And the only way that's going to happen is to teach you the proper way of doing it and also put you in the charts for homework. Your homework is every day back testing and looking. Back testing isn't necessarily my version of back testing is not equivalent to what everybody else talks about. Back testing is a casual view of previously traded price data that you can't participate in. Okay. Your mock trading is going back to those moves and market replay, maybe uh, a simulator, something like that. That's mock trading. There's a place for that. But my point of back testing is, is there validity behind the setups I'm telling you to look for? And where does your eye gravitate to? So you're back testing the repeating phenomenon of a individual PD array. So you go through the process of going through old data and say, okay, I'm going to look for breakers. How many times does a breaker form? On what time frame over the course of the last 16 weeks, last 12 weeks, okay? And you look at how much time it took for that market to deliver to a level that I teach you to look for. So if you're going short, you want to reach into a, a discount array, old low for sell side or uh, old imbalance below whatever the equivalent would be for the uh, range you're in, vice versa if you're going long. And you're going through and you're writing down a, a list of how many you see, how much movement there was, how much drawdown there was. And when you're doing that, what are you doing? You're, you're drawing up an affinity for that pattern because you're spending time looking at it. Just like when you were at the car lot and you looked around, you saw all those dogs of a car and you saw that one that just, it had to go home with you. That was the one. Well, you're, you're doing that. You're walking around that car lot by looking at these old price data and you're going to find that this beautiful cherry of a drive. You just want to have that one, take it home. And yes, it breaks your heart. If somebody says it's ugly, but fuck them. You love it. It's, it's your car. Well, that's the same thing with your trading pattern. Everybody's going to have an opinion about it. Oh, it's stupid. This is so much better. I make more money than this, but they ain't ever going to show you that. Bottom line is, is everybody's got an opinion. I'd like to have an asshole. Who cares? Nobody gives a fuck. You didn't ask. Don't ask them. Don't let anybody give you any input either. Which is why your trading journal is should not be on social media. But many of you treat Twitter, Instagram, all that shit as your trading journal. And you're inviting toxicity. Don't do those things. Don't do those things. Because the only thing you're doing by doing that is inviting somebody else that is ass tore up. They have no profitability. They have no clout. They have no following. They have no happiness. They're miserable pieces of shit. And they want nothing more than to make you feel miserable too. And they'll love doing it. So don't invite that. Don't allow for it. Keep the focus on the things I'm telling you to do which are boring in the beginning. But I promise you, if you go through the process of looking at old data, and once you find that thing that makes the most sense to you, what thing is that? It might be the fair value gap. It might be the breaker. It might be the optimal trade entry. It might be institutional order flow entry drill. It's whatever pattern that your personality aligns with. And you can make money with that one thing and never do anything else with the shit I've taught. Think. Bob Ross. He did most of his painting with the big brush, the small fan, and a little detail pen. Uh, not pen, but detailed uh, brush. He had lots of brushes. But most of his work was done with those three particular brushes. Go to an art store. There's an arsenal of brushes. I couldn't tell you what the hell those things are for. I'm sure there's specialty for something, but imagine that brush is your PD array. It does a specific thing. You only need one thing to do a specific thing, which is what? Profit. 
You have to have a multiplier, a reason to get in. What's the catalyst that puts you into a trade? That's all you're looking for in the beginning. But you have to decide what that is. I can't push that on you, which is what everybody fucking does in their other shit. Here's my MACD. Here's my settings for my moving averages. This is the harmonic pattern. This is the thing that is going to overlay above the highs and below the lows. It's going to tell you to be a buyer or seller. That's pressing you into a mold. You don't know the logic behind some of that shit that, that's being utilized. You don't know what's making it do it. So how can you trust it? You can't build an affinity. Like you, when you go to that car lot and you buy a car and you drive off, you have an affinity for that car. You're driving it. It means something to you. You can see it everywhere now. You think everybody's driving your car. You come out of the, the, the grocery store and you think that someone moved your fucking car. It's just somebody else bought that same car. Your, your attention span is dialed on that one thing. It means something to you. You need to make this be meaningful to you. I can't do that by talking to you in a video. I can't do that by me trading the setups. It might be entertaining. I might have a good choice of music when I'm sharing it. That's fine. I might not. The music's for me. It's not for you. But that execution is not to inspire you on that one setup. It's to broaden your understanding that we're not limited to this one setup. And there's setups a lot. And I can engage them and you will be able to do it too. But in the beginning, you need to give yourself the opportunity to find what it, what it is that your personality is best equipped for. And any educator that tries to press your ass into this is the only way to do it, where I'm telling you, the only way to perceive price being delivered is the way I'm telling you it should. Because anything else is it's contrived. It's all bullshit. It's conjecture that doesn't have any rooted truth behind it. I'm explaining to you before the market does what it's doing. So that's how you know you can trust me. Whether you believe there's an algorithm or not, I'll leave it to you to wrestle with how is it I'm doing it. I've already told you what it is that I'm doing. If you choose not to believe, that's fine. You don't need to subscribe to the algorithm theory. If you look for the pattern and you think it's going to unfold this way based on what I'm teaching you directionally, you don't need to have an algorithm in your head. You don't have to subscribe to it. You don't have to be a part of the, the religious cult that we have here. <laughs> okay? You don't need to. You don't need to be a card carrying member of the cult. Okay, you can still trade my stuff and not be a cult member. So just relax. But you have to give yourself the chance, the real chance, to do this without having any outward forcing. Like, I'm not manipulating any of you to do any one particular approach to trading. Notice that I haven't done that. And when you go through the core content, guess what it does? It gives you the opportunity to decide where you want to be. You want to be a long-term trader? Do you want to be a swing trader? A short-term trader? You're going to trade a daily range? Are you going to be a scalper? The decisions are up to you. And you have to bring that to this you do. And because there's so many of you, I'm not going to meet you. I can't sit down and answer everybody's fucking email. And I have students that paid me. And it, years ago, they were mad. They were mad as shit. Like, you should be. I, I can't. Think about it. I put out a tweet. In minutes, there's 200 likes and, 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 and comments. Like, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's to show you. Literally, when I open up my comments on my YouTube channel. You thought I was, I was I was afraid of people saying shit. I'm here on Twitter where people can say anything they fucking want. But it's a sugar fest. And everybody wants me to answer their questions. And I can't physically do that. I'm, 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 I'm one person. I only got so many minutes in a day. And I spend a lot already with you. So <laughs> you have to be doing something. And that is going through the things I tell you to do and trust that the process will give you what you're looking for. But you'll be so much more pleased when you have decided on your end, the model, the approach, how you're going to approach the marketplace as a trader. And you brought that to this. I just gave you the tools. You decided what you're going to do. And it's very rewarding because you feel like it's yours. Yes, I taught you how to trade. Yes, I taught you these techniques and concepts. But your model is the model that you're going to create. And when you start making fucking money with that, 
And you tell Carl to pound fucking sand, you're out of here. Enjoy working, bitch. I'm out of here. Every day is a fucking weekend to me now. Fuck off. That type of mentality is going to be easy for you to obtain. Not that you should have that mentality and that brash and rude, but for some of you, you can't wait to tell Carl to fuck himself. When you do this on your own and you've made that model from your own hard work, you put all the blood, sweat, and tears, the effort, you work through all of your uncertainties, your doubts, and you have done it yourself, it's so rewarding. It's so fucking rewarding because you didn't learn it in a fucking book. ICT didn't lay it out for you like I did the 2022 model. There's nothing wrong with that model. But you have decided that this is what you're going to do using what was been taught to you. It's yours. You fucking earned it. You earned it. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can minimize it. Who gives a fuck what they fucking think about me, the community, the concepts? You think you're going to give a fuck? Seriously. Think about this. If you're not profitable yet, are you going to give a flying fuck what anybody fucking thinks about what you're doing when you don't work anymore? When you have money in the bank that you don't have right now, is it going to fucking bother you how people talk about me? No. <laughs> no. You're not going to give a fuck. And that's the right mindset. You're here to learn how to fucking trade. You're not here to protect me from assholes that have little dick complexes. You're here to learn how to trade, make money, find a model, and get on business with fucking making your life better than it is. Touch base every now and then when you got a chance, send me a fucking postcard. There it is. There's no tethering to me. Just this year, that's it. Once you get your wings, fly, baby. I want to see how high you can go. I can't wait to see you do it. But you got to do the things I tell you to do. You have to. There's no way to do it other than that. You can't fumble your way through it. And it's going to require you to do work. And that means go through charts, see things in price action and data that you can't trade. You're not even pushing a button on demo. Nothing like that. Not even trade simulators. You have to go through the process of finding what it is that makes sense to you out of what I'm teaching as a PD array. That's your first step. Because I already taught you how to find a draw on liquidity, and I'm giving that to you all year long. That will happen by default. You'll learn that because you're being exposed to it. That's the only way you did it. That's, that's what happens. That's why I taught paid mentorships where they had to spend the entire year with me. They will see. They saw. It's documented. Nobody can change it. Nobody can say it didn't happen. It fucking happened year after year after year. Now you're seeing it on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. So, again... If it was fraud, you'd fucking know it by now. But that PD array, that multiplier, that entry pattern, that concept of getting in, you need to decide what that is. You need to decide that. Nobody can make that decision for you because I can't make you see a mitigation block. I can't see how I could go into the charts and make you see a breaker if you just can't understand a run on liquidity and a shift in market structure. There's two minimal criteria that have to be there for that to be a breaker. And if you don't understand liquidity or where people put trading stop losses and how they might look at the marketplace as a potential breakout, you won't understand a breaker. You won't understand it. You can see me pointing to it, but it means nothing to you. Why? Because you haven't studied old data enough to say, oh yeah, Look what happens there. And you have to look at the chart and question, before this move happened, who was long and who was short? And if they were long or short, where was their stop loss at? And then reverse engineer all the price movements, because that's what I did, folks. That's what I was doing on America Online. I was literally going back through old data, and I was looking for things that I'm teaching you. And when I started doing things and calling the market like that, I got noticed. Because it was too consistent. And I'm certain, I'm absolutely fucking certain, okay, that people are watching me do this on Twitter and they're watching me do it on a live stream. And I'm calling shit so precisely on a minute by minute basis. They're questioning, how the fuck am I doing this? I have to be doing this with magic. I have to be doing some kind of trickery. There has to be something going on. And the wonderful thing is, is you're all watching with real time data and it's happening. And I'm leaving no excuse except for 
foresight. It's not hindsight. It's foresight. And you won't be able to do that unless you've done all the back testing, which is simply just looking at old moves and studying them. You're not trying to trade them. You're just observing how often does it form, how quickly does it move into profit, and how much drawdown would it be. And you're logging that. And you're putting down, okay, in this market, on this date, it did this. It moved this much to profitability. This is how much it had in drawdown. This is how much time it took to trade. And then you're going to get a, a running total or an average of how many points or pips, whatever market you're looking at. On average, collectively, cumulatively, you'll see that. And then you'll also see what's your maximum losing trade that you saw in that sample set. And what was your maximum profit trade? Throw both of them out. Then average what you have there. And that'll give you a pretty good idea as a baseline. If that was going to be your model, this is what you, because you can't say that would have been my best trade. I would have got that. Take that out. And your worst trade, what was potentially your worst trade, you probably would have not had your entire stock taken out because you could be doing partials. So you got to take both those numbers out. Don't even factor them in. Now, some of you might argue and say, no, I can understand taking your best winning trade out, but you got to leave the worst trade in there. You're talking from a perspective that you want to wreck your fucking self. I'm not taking on ridiculous risk. I'm not trading to try to save face on, on live streams. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm trying to take measured, calculated risks. And if the trade is going to go bad, generally, most times I'm going to see it's probably not going to be there. And I start doing that too the three minute rule of it's got to start talking to me right now and be in my favor, or I'm going to start taking some of the trade off or close it all away. I have tools for all those things. You don't see these other traders out there that are trying to teach you. They don't have that shit. They're just reacting because they believe they have to react to their bullshit that pops up on their chart. They got to react to the indicator. They got to react to something happening outside of price itself. I'm predicting, I'm telling you what these candles are going to do. <laughs> Come on. how? I mean, how much more evidence would one need, right? I got a whole year of it. I got a whole fucking year of it. My bag is not empty yet. Got a lot more cookies in this jar. But I gave you six more minutes than I told you I would give you. And yes, I'm going to regret having talked the way I talked in this one. And I can't help it, but given enough time to run i'm going to run wild and i apologize if i spoke in such a way that was not becoming of a mentor that you would have high regard for but everything i said tonight i meant everything i meant for your learning guide you where your focus should be and to remind you what you're here for and the length of time that's going to be needed for certain things to develop But you will do well to listen to everything I'm telling you to do and do your best to do it, even if it feels uncomfortable, even if it feels like it's unproductive or counterintuitive. Remember, you're coming to me to learn. I know how to do this. I'm proving it in a degree that nobody else is going to be able to match. Dave, a reminder, I'm going to be expecting you to call every single one minute candle. Five handles as a starting point, I think, is realistic. Let me know in your opinion. I mean, even if you don't think it is, don't. if anybody says they don't think that five handles is a good starting point, like a training wheel operation for a target for a new student, if you don't, if you don't think that's a good thing, say so. But folks in the community, don't, don't blast them. Be, you know, be respectful you know, and ask them why if they want to divulge that in their response. Preferably, they, they should. They should say, I don't think it's a good idea to look for five handles initially as a first target as a developing student. And here's why I believe that. But if you believe that five handles is, is practical, it's something that is reasonable, that's not too high and lofty, and it makes sense to have something like that to be a first rung of the ladder in terms of experience to strive for, let me know that also as, and as a reply to me posting this Twitter space uh, on, my, on my feed, this reply to that post. And let me know if you think five handles is, is, is practical. And it makes sense for you to see that as a, a first rung objective. Because I think it's practical. 
you know, I think it's something that you'll see form pretty easy and frequently over the course of a week. I mean, you have lots of opportunities to see that form. And if you're trading with one mini, that's 250 bucks. And a lot of you young guys and gals, and maybe the older folks that are, you know, on social security, you don't, you don't work anymore. And if you just got one trade with one mini, that's five handles. That's 250 bucks. I'm certain that a thousand dollars extra a month would do a whole lot. Maybe you're on medications and prescription medicines and, you know, Maybe insurance doesn't cover everything. There's a lot of things that could be out there that would you know, cost you a lot of money right now. And if you can pick up an extra $250 a week and that's all you ever was able to do, that's not failure. That's not failure. And it's not Lamborghini. <laughs> okay? I, I, I know. And that's exactly why I've taught the same way all the time. Practical. Practical. Everybody that turns this industry into get rich quick, they are fraudulent because 99% of the people that are telling you they can do this can't. And whenever they try to, it's interesting to see how they fail. And the people that are teaching practically how to do this, I think, are the ones that are more prone to be able to do it. And I'm just trying to be... An old fuddy-duddy, old fuddy-duddy ICT. <laughs> Nothing about image. Just the bare bones, the brass tacks, where the rubber meets the road. How are you going to take this and make money with it? And if you can alleviate some major bill, or maybe a part of one bill, each month, and that's your first experience in profitability, and you find it consistently easy to do that, and you slowly, not quickly, slowly build up to eventually getting half of your bills paid off for the month and then eventually replacing what was required in maybe one or two jobs to get your income covered. Now you can get it entirely from your trading. So now you've doubled your income. So the next step is to triple your income and save up $200,000 of your own money, not $200,000 in funded account, $200,000 of your own money. And then have a respectable amount of money for trading in yourself, your own money. And you can hold on to these funded accounts if they're still allowing that to be a thing. But you have to have money in the bank before you consider leaving your job. Just because you made a lot of money in your funded account and you had a six-figure withdrawal, that's not, that's not an invitation to quit. Because $100,000 is nothing. Like, that's nothing money. For some of you that find it as a first big windfall victory. It's life-changing for you. But it's not going to last forever. I mean, shit. You, you can buy, what, one car now? I mean, most cars are so over, you know, <laughs> when we have the cars I like. But the point is, it's a lot of money to some of you, but it won't last you a long time. And you don't want to quit your job and lose one stream of income and put pressure on you because you have not fully adopted the mindset of, I have enough money. I don't have to take a trade right now, which is what would happen if you are undercapitalized, ill-equipped, don't have the experience. You've been doing it for too little time. If you stop working and you now place all the emphasis on doing what? Taking a trade. Whereas if you're working your job, you can afford to take a loss. Your mental capital is a little bit higher in equity than that of if you quit your job, you don't have money in the bank. Why do you need $200,000? Well, chances are most of you don't have a $200,000 a year salary. Most of you probably don't have a $100,000 a year salary. So it's given, in my mind, at least like a two-year padding of not needing to have the bill money made right now. And it gives you time. It gives you a cushion. And then you have a respectable amount of money to trade with. What is that? My opinion, a hundred grand. And now you're thinking, that oh, just puts me right at the at the whole ballpark. No, it doesn't. You're trying to quit your job too quickly. You're gonna have to fucking work with Carl for a little while. That's the way it is, man. Okay. But there's coming a day. If you do everything I'm telling you to do, you have the advantages of getting there. You are not being promised that. But if you do all the things right, you're going in the right direction. If it takes you Three years, what's the alternative? 
You're fucking working with Carl. You're going to work with fucking Carl. So just put your nose in the books, okay? ICT book right here. Every day, we're writing a new chapter. Every week, it's a new volume. All you have to do is keep showing up. You will get fresh bread. And you'll grow stronger over time. You'll get more experience. And when this happens, and you finally find yourself, think about it. You think, oh, these people I'm going to interview, they're making big money. They're getting six figures. I guarantee you, when they first started trading, that was only a dream. They couldn't see it happening. Now that they've done it, they know it's possible. They don't have that fear of, I wonder if it could. It, it, it's fucking happened for them. They've done it. Some of them done it more than once. So now they what? They're desensitized to it. They don't see it as an impossible thing. Whereas right now, you think it's impossible. Everything's impossible until you do it. Everything. Everything. Everybody told me I would never figure this shit out. And I probably... Figured out some stuff. <laughs> and you'll figure your own shit out too. But quitting your job too quickly is one of the worst mistakes you're going to make because you're going to place so much pressure. More than if you were trying to live stream trading. Because you can get up there and say, nah, I'm not going to take any trades because you can get stage fright. And just don't take any trades. But you can't not take trades when you don't have a job. And the only means of income is you making winning trades. If you don't have the experience of knowing what you're looking for, knowing it like the back of your hand, and you know that you're going to find a setup, you just, I know, I know I'm finding winning setups next week. I know. Do you know that about what you're doing? If you're honest, do you really know that? If you're honest and you say no, that's not weakness. You know what that is? You're being practical about yourself. You're being practical and realistic with your present aptitude and skill set and the lack thereof. You're not already trying to do something or thinking highly of yourself without having the ability to do those things. You're literally on the right track if that's how you think. Because you're being realistic, you don't think that you're going to be able to do that because it's not practical for you right now. It's too early in the game. It does not mean that that's how it's going to be. You're never going to get it. It just means right now you're still in development. You're under construction. And I am turning you into a savage. You're going to be a bad motherfucker come November. And maybe you don't talk like that, but you're going to be a bad motherfucker. Let's just be honest. You're going to be a motherfucking savage. You're going to be able to look at these charts and in short order, very short order in time. You'll know exactly where it's going to go. Yes, I fucking said that. You're going to know exactly where it's going to go. And you're going to have multiple ways to approach getting in it. That's empowerment. That's what the outcome of this year is going to be. And you're seeing proof of it every single day that we get together. These things repeat. I'm calling shots. I'm calling where the market's going to go. All you have to do is study it. And then let the process of being there, observing it, even if it's in hindsight, if you can't be there when I'm doing it live, watch the recordings or add the tweets to your chart afterwards and see it. Your eye will be trained in observing it. And because you're doing it, these motherfuckers are going the wrong direction. <laughs> Stupid people driving around here. Bel Air, Maryland. I don't know where you guys are at listening, but the... The driving up here is mental. Like they literally tailgate like crazy. Like they're going to push you. And I felt like I had to tell you that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to confess. It's one of my pet peeves around here. And it's mainly the ladies. Like they got somewhere to be all the time. And don't be mad at me, women. Okay. It's just, I'm just telling you my observation. My wife even commits behind me with that idea and says, you know what? Hey, you know, it is the women up here that, that tailgate too much. But see what I mean? See how easy it is for me to be distracted? <laughs> and you want me to be on a live stream with chat people talking to me? No, I won't be able to see candlesticks doing anything. 
So <laughs> my reticular activating system is keyed up on everything. Short, short attention span on, on everything. But anyway, back test, study, look for the things I'm telling you to look for in uh, lectures and do that while we're doing this tape reading. That's how we're spending the first two months. We already got through pretty much this month so far. You know, it's just a little bit more time and then we'll be into what would be considered month two. In month three, you're pushing buttons. Okay, I'm going to put you in the markets. I'm going to tell you, do this right now and start tracking how much time. And you're all going to have different fills. You're all going to break the rules. <laughs> you're not going to put your stop loss in because you're going to be fearful that you're going to get stopped out. Like I'm in the room looking at you and you know, you're, you're afraid or you're afraid that other people in this community are going to see you do it wrong. And I want you to press into that and be interactive with me. Share that experience publicly when I ask you all to do it. I'm not making money on the tweet replies, okay? So it's not traffic. I, I'm not monetized in Twitter. I'm doing it so that way we're seeing and hearing each other just like a text message. Like if I was your brother, if I was your dad or a relative, I want to send you a message. And like I had your phone number or whatever. I'm treating that medium the same way. I'm looking out for you. This is a lot of you. And every time I'm tweeting to you, it's the equivalent of me texting a family member saying, hey, here's my here's my focus right now. I want you to know about this. So it's not a signal service, but it's like a handshake. I'm grabbing you, pulling your attention to something right then and there, and then you have to engage it. But in April, you're pushing buttons then like we're that rest of the year, we're pushing buttons. So that way you're, it's conditioning you. And I'm going to put you through the same process. I'm putting Cameron through it right now. And hopefully you know, it won't take me more than four weeks for him to be, I'm hoping it's going to be less than four weeks to be honest with you, but his performance anxiety that's hindering him right now and trying to con, you know, not convince me, but to impress me rather. Um, he wants to be able to do it quickly and say, you know, look how I was able to do it quick for you, dad. Don't do that. And none of you should feel that way either. You take whatever time that you require. If it takes you the full year, so what? That's exactly what I gave allowance for. I think it's going to take that. And for some of you, it may take a little bit longer. That's okay. If you do everything I tell you to do, it will happen for you. If you quit, then you failed. I'm not getting paid for you, by you trying to do it. I'm not, make, I'm not making ad revenue on how much backtesting you do. Okay, <laughs> Think about it. You got to really put this in perspective. What is my motivation here? Your success. Is your success your motivation here? Or are you just dabbling? If you're here just for morbid curiosity, you're wasting your time. If you're here to wait to see some kind of failure, <laughs> I'm going to fucking deny that. I'm going to love denying that all year long. But if you're here to learn, and you want to learn how to make a lot of fucking money potentially in the future where you can do this Without me, we're learning in the safest environment there can be. There's no trading going on while you're learning this. It's all removed from the risks. There's no risk in this learning process with me. You cannot lose money. You cannot make money. You're literally learning how the candlesticks are going to form. You know after this what your model is. You know what you're going to wait for. And that's clarity. That's what everybody that fails does not have. That's what everybody that che that teaches everything in hindsight but can't do it in front of you with any consistency. That's what they're lacking. They can hit and wonder and one hit and wonder here and there. And they hope that they try to do that in front of people on the internet. And when they fail miserably, they go right back into their cave. And if they just listen to me and put down their bullshit, literally, this could transform everything they're doing. And it wouldn't be toxic. They wouldn't run around trying to tell everybody that you're low IQ assholes and shit. Okay, they could be finally be profitable and consistent and not be so toxic. So anyway, I got a short little drive back home. I'd love to take you home and talk to you while I'm doing so, but 
I go back through some forests and such, and I'll probably lose you in the signal. So this is the part where I tell you that you got an extra 25 minutes or so. No extra charge. ICT, you're a hell of a guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So enjoy your Sunday. I, I don't know if I'll be tweeting anything tomorrow, but I will be joining you on live stream on Monday. And then we'll be uh, going back at it again. So until I talk to you then, be safe.